What two movies was that song in? In what two movies was that in song? In which two movies? Ooh, in which? I know one of them. Only. Yes. What's the second one? Oh, boy. I don't know. I'm Starring sure. Michael J. Fox. Oh, Teen Wolf? Negative. Secret of My Success. Yes. Yes. Highest, I almost went with, I almost went with Doc Hollywood. Highest of shitty high fives. I almost went with Doc Hollywood. Well, it's because we're short, bro. We can't go high. <laughs> highest of medium fives. <laughs> we're, we're extra medium today. That's my favorite shirt size, extra medium. Extra medium is my favorite as well. So, sir, uh, I think we're going heavy today. We're going deep tonight, today, and then we're going to follow it up with something more fun. We're doing right? heavy squats. <sighs> All right, bro. Yeah. Today's not conscious. Welcome, Welcome everyone. everyone. Jinx. What the f- Dude, you, we got to stop. We spend way too much time together, you know, we, like four hours we, a week. We got to stop changing each other's diapers. It's like eight hours a week because we love each other's company and enjoy the conversation. Well, uh, the first part I would beg to differ. Did you get WD-40 on this yet? <laughs> no, Does I just, still did squeaky? that pick up? I don't even know if that picked no, up. No, it didn't. I was just up. talking because it's going to start squeaking. Yeah, it's fine. It's, I like squeaky. Squeaky. squeaky as long as you will. Clean, yeah. gets the queso cheese. It gets the WD-40 apparently. <laughs> so not conscious. Jace. Welcome. Thank Buenos you for dias. joining us. We're going deep, boys. We're going deep down the What's What's going on today, sir? Uh, Century of the Self, part dos. Dos part tambourines. Du? Is that like a Hot Shots part de? Yeah. Oui, oui. Du Chimini. That's a restaurant in Philly, actually. Okay. Yeah. But you, what, you don't know what it stands for. I don't. Du Chimini. Is that like Chim Chimini, Chim Chim Teru? Yeah. But different? Yeah, it's like a spoonful of sugar makes medicine go down. Mm, sugar. Mary. What uh, What does it mean? Oh, two chimneys. Okay. I was <laughs> like, so for real? Yeah, it's like, oh, I, oh, yeah, I it's didn't. Like, well, like the French term for garage is garage. So oh. try to figure out that one. These are tough, man. Uh, So what does two chimneys serve? Food. You're not. This a is... lot of food. I think it's a, it's a higher price. So one. is it a like French restaurant? Yeah. Okay. Think, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I it's, didn't... Like, it's like French cuisine, you know, four or five star Michelin type. Like escargot? Probably. And stuff? Okay. Escargots. Yes. Some non cargots. Snails and shit. Yes. Some T cargots, some U cargots. All of the vowels. All the letters. Consonants. Yeah. yeah. The Both. B cargo and the S cargo. All the cars go that go. <laughs> Valet parking is free. All right. So we're, 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 okay. We're, we're meditating. Mm. We're med- okay. We're in this state. Century of the self part oh. two. Oh. So. Meanwhile, no, uh, after part one, yeah, we realized that Sigmund Freud's nephew was a badass mental manipulator. Yes. I do have a, a, a follow up. This was going to be released after the social media episode, correct? Correct. I did have a point that I failed to mention on the social media episode. It will be released exactly one week after. So okay, it's the perfect so, time to, to talk uh, I about I did it. have a point about that is, is and they, they tie together. That's why I bring it up. The issues regarding social media and addiction and everything that we talked about last week, right? Is that the new public relations, quote unquote? Is that how companies are, let's say, pick a company. Uh, a, new, a new big warehouse store comes out and they have a new Twitter and a new Facebook and a new blah, blah, blah. And they want to get people to buy their stuff. So they're using social media to integrate into the culture to make sales is social media, the new public relations. What do you think we're doing with it? <laughs> we're doing, we're doing, well, no, public I'm talking relations. about on yeah. a large scale. Oh, absolutely. You and Why I not? are not a new, let's just say uh, the new Walmart. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to say Walmart. I'll give you a company exactly that's doing it right now <laughs> on your feed. Have you seen Volvo commercials pop up about um, how much they've given away? They gave away the three point harness. It was like, it's like the anniversary of the three point seatbelt. They oh. never patented or whoever patented it. Volvo came up with it. Okay. So they gave it to the world to save millions of lives. And on my Twitter feed, there's Volvo. a Volvo thing every, it's probably every time I open it. So they're not, paying Twitter to. Well, no, they're posting. They have, it's free. Oh, so it's right? not a. Yeah. So they're just paying something. That's what's great about social media. It is technically not costing them. They hire someone just to bomb Twitter with their shit. Are you sure they're shit. not paying Twitter to promote the ad? 
They don't need to if they're in the right place, if they got the right people set up with the right fake accounts and the connections and the way people know how to manipulate these algorithms. And I don't know anything about it, how to manipulate these algorithms. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I, no, I oh, here you go. First one. Here's an Apple one, obviously, commercial. Yeah, right I've seen top, Apple, so. and I think I've seen, Apple. I've seen Buick, and I've seen Cadillac, but those are both GM. Yeah. But I've not, I don't think I've seen Volvo. Okay, yeah, Volvo is one that came up on mine a lot, a lot but just because I think it's an anniversary, so it's like they really hit it hard. Yeah, here's Apple twice in like those are well, the- Well, that's because the new 12 just came The out. first two commercials or the first two things on Twitter that I'm scrolling through are Apple. Then IBM right after that. Yeah, so, so the question is... They're paying to get some kind of placement apps. They have to. I can't imagine why? them not. But the question is... Is that public relations? Yes. Okay. Because last Century of Self, episode part one, we talked about how public relations, that term, came out of World War I where it was actually called propaganda. Yeah. Okay, so now fast forward 100 years to the year 2020, here we are, and public people say public relations. Okay, is social media the new public relations? Here's the best way to answer that question. Sure. What do you and I use it for? To promote our show. It's yeah. To show, to and to relate ourselves to the, it is really public relations for us. And dog pictures. What does, what do all these radical left and right groups use it for? To mobilize and to bomb, you know, not bomb physically. Well, to promote to Twitter their, bomb to, with verbiage and whatever, right? Well, to promote their, pla- whatever their, whatever hey, their vote for my is. guy. Yeah. Hey, vote for my senator. Yeah. Hey, vote for my congresswoman. Yeah. It's whatever. actually more dangerous because it really, You could hire someone as your social media slash public relations, and it it really doesn't cost anything else if that's strategically done correctly. You get the right friends, you get the right groups, you get the right followers, you you follow the right people, and you don't need to really technically advertise. You just have to post all day. So you boom, 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 all day. Your thumbs are the size of Popeye's forearms. Whoa. And you're just like, you're smashing them keys. like Yeah, well, and obviously companies have entire staffs that all they do is manage the social media. I know people who do that as a job. They tweet out for parties or companies or new events and whatnot. They they, they work for a media company, which is, it's got to be the new public relief. I mean, it's the direct relationship to you. I mean, it goes to the end user. It doesn't even go through a medium, really. And that's true with every... Every sports team has a has a social media staff yeah. or a you know a couple people, right? All the smart companies nowadays have some kind of social media connection that they could call at some point and go, "Hey, we need help." I would bet. I would guess. At least they have somebody on the Rolodex or in their contacts. Right. right. And think about how like an air- I just said Rolodex. Yeah, and it's and it's fantastic. Sad. No, it's amazing. I'm sorry, man. It's a it's a roll of iPhone. It's a roll of phone. But think about an airline, and I mentioned this last week, when an airline will tweet out, oh, the, the Houston airport's closed because of weather, it'll be delayed 49 minutes. So the, whoever's in, Frank Johnson, whoever's in charge of that account, tweets that out. Or somebody, hey, at American Airlines or whatever their Twitter handle is, where's my effing luggage? Okay, well, if that tweet is tweeted by somebody with 8 million followers, that can make American Airlines look horrible and then their stock can go down. Yeah. So in, if that's handled correctly and the public sees that, they can go, hey, look at how well they handle that and then their stock can go up. So that these companies have to be aware of that. So I think I answered my own question that it is the new public relations. You did. And you are, they are very aware of this because think about the woman who tw- tweeted out, uh, I'm flying to Africa. I hope I don't get AIDS. Just kidding. I'm white. Oh, damn. Did you hear this? Story? No, I don't know oh. idea what you're talking about. Bro. I can't. <laughs> you know what? We're going to, we should do a separate one on that. Bro. Long story short. Yeah, please. She, she was part of like, not OkCupid, part of Match.com. Like she was like, OkCupid's public relations oh, person. Oh, shit. That she was tweets stupid. Jokes all the, she tweets jokes all the time. Like, oh my God, I'm sitting here like at this airport, blah, blah, blah. Killing time. She goes on a flight right before she goes, hey, I'm going to Africa. Hope I don't get AIDS. Ha ha. Just kidding. I'm white. By the time she lands, millions have seen this thing. Oh, yeah. And she is, she's lost her job. She's like, her life is over. It was over. And I'll get you all the information. It's a really interesting story. What's interesting even more so is I follow up, right? You know me. She gets fired from OKCupid or Match or whatever. She's now rehired by them because 
it's all settled down. Of course. Settle down. Yeah. That's bullshit. Like fucking, ad- if you're going to be, a, if you're going to address it like that, or just say, you know, it's a really shitty thing to say and she learned her lesson. Correct. One or the other. That's what they, sh- the latter right. is what they should have done. I'm fine with that. But also if you want to be stern and, and say like, we just, we have a nose with zero tolerance policy or something, whatever. If they did, don't rehire the, the woman. Then. Yeah. They should you have reprimanded. I mean? If like, you know, you're going to rehire her. Not hearing, you know, hearing the firing and then seeing this backhand under under you know shadow rehiring yes, yes and this is years later i just happen to come across it because you know me i look because you're fucking the, nuts yeah i'm i'm not you know, an amazing way well i'm in a very crazy way so yes um one tweet can make or break your life i mean that's really so i can't imagine being any less public relations i mean it's okay and what's interesting is like you as an end user who uses it the way we do we don't actually have to pay a public relations person. I am the cheapest public relations person right now on, on the Twitter with you and I. Mm-hmm. Please try us. Self-promote, self-promote, self-promote. But it's working. I, well, it absolutely is. And when people are asking for general recommendations, I absolutely want to say, hey, you obviously would never hear of us any other way. Yeah. Give us 10 minutes. And you'll be like, ugh. Or, hmm, I'll give you another five. Or, oh, I'll give you another 20. Yeah. Or if you if you take... 90 seconds and you scroll through the episodes and go, oh, I want to listen to the church one or I want to listen to the 80s music one or I want to listen to the da-da-da one. And then you're like, okay, it's okay. I listened to half, whatever. I'll try this other one, whatever. Yeah, exactly. And and I've been now with us being on that side of it, of asking people to listen, I am also tasked with listening to others. Yeah. So I've been on there. I'm like burning the can. I'm not going to lie. I'm burning the 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 candle both ends for sure. But it's, I, I met this, uh, take up space podcast. I think, well, I started engagement yet, uh, yesterday with them and it's two women and we were back and forth like, Hey, which, what episode should I listen to of yours? You know, that's what I asked. That's her. great. So she's like, well, I like this one, this one, this one. Uh, let's start with nine. I go nine. It is boom done. And you know, and then someone wrote something really nice. I've heard about the toxicity of Twitter and I've seen the toxicity of Twitter. You and I are not engaging in the toxicity of Twitter, and what I'm finding, it's not in our it's not in our echo chamber. It's really not. It's been pleasant. But you and I don't react, right? That's we're the not point. those kind of people, right? Right. There's a gentleman who made a broad statement about self promotion, and yeah. he does a running podcast. I think yes, um, and he has 880 episodes. So. The dude's been doing it forever. A long time. But we haven't. Okay. We've done it. We, we launched in Jul- on July 2nd. So that was four months ago. Yeah. He's, I don't know what 800 episodes is, but if it's one week. That's a couple of years. That's uh, 15 years, bro. I mean, it's, bro. that's a long time. And it's not that long, but he probably does two, you know, say it's a hundred. It's probably eight years. Probably eight, eight years. <laughs> uh, it's definitely more than three years. But. Anyway, so he said something, and then I engaged. I said, well, let me ask you, as as a novice, I, I wasn't, I am like, I hope this doesn't sound douchey, but what do we do? How do we promote, right? But he was very kind, and we had a very nice back and forth. So it turned out that we can make it the way we want to make it. Because coming out of last week's episode, the so, when we talked about Social Dilemma, man, I yeah, pretty dire. But then this whole week has been a pleasant week, Big once again. But you and I are consciously not being toxic yeah when there's no reason to be people are consciously being toxic and getting pulled into toxicity without even knowing it right but we also avoid politics and we avoid the you know the top five issues where people go down a rabbit hole of if you're not with me you're against me right so and that this conversation has nothing to do with today's podcast no but it but it has to do with the self and and your question about social media being the new public relations is absolutely valid accurate and true Okay. So with that, we could probably... We should roll on. We should roll forward, sir. So I'm going to let you steer this ship. And I, I don't even like to drive. I'm just going to be... You're going to be like, pivot, pivot, ching, pivot. ching. Do you, did you take any notes? Yes, I took notes. Okay, so today's uh, Century of Self Part 2 is called The Engineering of Consent. And this was born out of World War II in the late 40s and early 1950s as... Go ahead. If I may. Please, of course. Oh, sir. Oh, yes. Oh. You with the hand. Oh, yeah. Check mark. Um, well, just, it's kind of, the whole century of self is a chronological, it seems to be a chronological it, absolutely order. Absolutely correct. So we are coming into World War II now. Yes. But we came out of World War One is really where it started 
in part one, just to be clear if anyone hadn't heard that other part. Uh, yes. Thank you. So it's a chronological thing, not skipping around like, oh, correct. It drops us here and then it drops no, no, us. No, no, no. It's, it's pretty linear, which it, is nice. Yes, correct. Which I, which Absolutely I, correct. Helps me follow it. Better. I appreciate the clarification. So it, it's my perception was that, and please correct me if I, this is how I saw it, but it seemed like a pendulum swing in the opposite direction by the American government as they saw what the Nazis did in Europe and they were, there was fear that the American public could turn into that. They, they feared what the human being was capable of because they never saw atrocities of that nature before. Yes. Is that correct? Did, yes. you, did you do you agree of the pendulum swing? Well, to expound on that, please. It it was more like Freud as a whole, and Bernays obviously as his nephew and his daughter Anna. Yes, correct. The whole Freud compound, the clan, the clan, sure, the the cult. I don't know whatever you want to call it. Because technically, I mean, it really was a cult. It was a belief system. All the people, because their belief system shaped the way they interacted with people, which shaped the way they reacted to their interaction. So they actually created and destroyed things. So they yeah, had, they yeah. were a cult. I mean, they told you how to be and what. And we'll talk about the successes and failures of yeah, that at the end. Yeah. But World War Two. Well, World War One. Really, remember we talked about Freud said man is capable of X, and then X happens. Yeah, it was the so eerie. it was like holy shit, right? Yeah. Well, then they found how quickly, demo- even in a democracy, that yeah they it could still happen. It didn't matter, so, right? The so type was, of government right. it happened. Well, the thing was, that's where the engineering consent comes because they talked about the um, Freud believed that the hidden, hidden deep within humans are dangerous and irrational fears. And the unleashing of these instincts led to Nazi Germany. Yeah. So what they saw was um, humans acting extremely irrationally or whatever. So their democracy, they had to shape the democracy the way to keep them still from being irrational it's America, really america yeah america they yes. didn't want america to become nazi germany correct so they they engineer that's where the whole, kind of the whole engineering of consent kind of comes full circle yes and it does close with that so i'm sure we will talk a little bit more about that but um yeah they it still need to be controlled it had to be democracy in their way because if this if they weren't following the system if we didn't follow the system it would all fall apart. Right. So it had to be, once again, we talk about systems, especially in the time of COVID and the time of, you know, the the term defund the police and all these other crazy things that we're talking about right now. Not crazy things that we're talking about because these are real issues, but just... Things we've never encountered before as, a, as an American. Certainly you and I haven't. Correct. For sure. Well, I mean, 1968 is probably the closest thing that the American people would, would equate 2022. Yeah. But you had, you had riots. Yeah. Well, I mean, not in your in, neighborhood in per 90, se. But I mean, get 90, you mean, um, 91? And, yeah, well, you have Watts and Compton. But Compton that was the 60s. Rodney King. Rodney King was 91. Rodney yeah. King, right. We had, there was a New York one in between, you know, in the, I think seventies one. Yeah. It, it just happens. I mean, it builds up and blows up, right? Yeah. It builds up. But the point is there's still a system in place and that system True. was created all the way before our parents were born mm-hmm. or right when our parents were born. Same thing, right? Yes. So we've been living two, three generations of this system, maybe even four, because you and I are middle-aged and don't have children. So our yes. children could have children by now. We, I mean, True. we're enough to have a 20. We could have had a kid at 20 who had a kid at 20, and we've got four generations here. You know yes, I mean? that is correct. So, And that's possible out there. Yes. So... It's real out there. Yeah. So three, four generations now have lived under a system to control how your democracy, how your, how your demo, like the way you work democracy, they work it for you. It's really odd. I, I'm still scratching my head. Not too hard. No, no. The I, other, I the other so. phrase that I found interesting um, regarding coming out of World War II was the, the government to repress the savage barbarism. And I, I just thought that was insane that, that because Nazi Germany acted one way that the government was afraid Americans would do this, could be capable of doing the same thing. I just thought, I just thought that was crazy that, that they would go, they would imagine that that was possible on another continent. 
I happen to have the same note. Of course you do, because we're That's, fucking psychic. Well, it speaks to the power of this, of this specific statement. Suppress the barbarism that lies just beneath the skin. So they, once again, Freud, Bernays, and Frank, and Anna, Frank, or Freud, I'm sorry, Anna Freud, Edward Bernays, and Sigmund, all believed that that's what humans were. They were barbarians just waiting to get out. The, the, the challenge with that is that was their assumption going in. It played out that way, but I don't, it wasn't all due to the way they said it. Remember, we talk, Europe was just volatile in its own right, and humans are evolved apes who do fight over territory regardless anyway, but there is a conscious side of it. You know what I mean? Like, yes. So yeah, the suppress part is crazy, right? Cause we're, we're talking about we're American democracy and freedom, but you have to suppress something that doesn't sound free. That, that sounds, sounds like really stupid. Right. So they wanted to control our freedom. That's oxymoronic. It, it makes really little sense. And we talk about the success of it later, right? Or the lack of. Um, Where you think you're free, but you're not. Well, remember, we found, well, we'll, talk, we'll get to that. Um, that. I mean, that reminds me of what Carlos Mencia said. I know you don't like him. No, it's okay. Hey, did, if it's an original say, thought, I accept if, it. If you, and he probably stole it from three other people, but that's, that's fine. No, okay. I, I, whatever. I still like him. Anyway, he said, if you think you're free, go to work on Monday and tell one of my jokes and see what happens. Yeah. So... You know what I mean? So you're really not free. Yeah, tell a Jeselnik joke, right? Right. I mean, you will get fired in 10 seconds. So, and that's, that's not a, that's not a, I mean, obviously this is a, a little bit of a stretch where it's not, it's a, it's a corporate thing, not an American thing, but I think you see my, I think you understand the analogy. Well, it is because prof the professional workplace is all about suppressing your individuality. Well, you have to fit in a certain right. mold so that you can get paid. And I, under, well, I completely point is, understand that. You have to fit in a mold to to demonstrate your product correctly, to have the correct advertising. Like, it's a whole, the whole thing's a structure. Of course. Right? But that's with any job, with any right. company. Mm, yeah. I mean, that goes back to what you said last week, where you had to wear a blue shirt with a certain label on right. the front and to sell TVs and shit. Right. But I would think at a place, say like Saturday Night Live, in the writer's room, I'd almost guess you could pretty much write anything without consequence you couldn't do anything like you couldn't actually physically do something like steal or do you something couldn't like do that. that aids joke about africa you could totally do you that. could try in the it, writer's room you and could. then you would get shot down well yeah they just wouldn't put it out right but you can you can express it they would all laugh and go we can't do that yeah ex they would all laugh first yeah, of all right they would all laugh and then yeah none of them would <laughs> none of them would do it none of them would tweet it and then none well, of no, them it, would get fired you're right because like how many times i mean look we've made some Pretty dark jokes. Yeah. It's just who we are. Because er um, everybody's twisted to some degree. Right. It's just, are you willing to say it out loud? You know, because everyone's with this? thinking it. You know what scares me now okay. that you brought up work? Reaganomics. I'm going to be sweating. <laughs> no. Vo something D O O economics. Voodoo economics. That's pretty good. Uh, that's my Ben Stein, ladies and gentlemen. Smart guy. Yes. Speechwriter for, I believe, Reagan and Nixon and a bunch of people. He's a really smart guy. When, when Ben signs money, I used yes. to watch that. That dude knew everything. And I'm like, uh, Ben, you, you got me licked, bro. You got me licked, bro, bro. Okay, so about work. We're yeah. doing this podcast. I feel fell over the place. I'm pretty not kind in general at times on this thing. You would agree? Um, 48%. I know at least one person who's listened to this from work. But it, if some other, other people in the higher ups listen to this, should I... Should I be held accountable for what I say here? Absolutely not. Why not? But because what you do in your personal time is your fucking business. I agree. However, that's that. This is not part of what the podcast is supposed to be about today. Uh, However, semicolon. That's that's another issue that we should have discussed last week you know with what? social media. That's another podcast. Stop. We're tabling that. That is podcast. We'll do that as our next podcast. We'll do a little social media. Now you know what? We'll do something more in a month, fun. maybe. Yeah, let's do this in a month. Okay. But we'll talk about how. Your personal social media could interfect in if uh, could be affected, interact, in, be affected, be flibbity flobbed, flobbity by flibbed your, by your professional life. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. And then we'll pull out that story about the woman who tweeted, tweeted the Africa, the Africa tweet, tweet. It's infamous. 
So um, back to suppressing barbarism. Yeah. What was the next thing you came across on that? The next thing was um, how so many soldiers coming back from World War II uh, saw psychoanalysts because there was so much, well, now we know it is PTSD, but I guess what's funny is that I, I asked a bunch of people over the past year, I've asked 10 people. When was the first time you heard the word PTSD? And they said, you know, within the past 20 years, but if you, Obviously, they're referring, you know, the, the word shell shock, and um, there's another one, World War, World War One had... Battle fatigue. We talked yeah, about this. Yeah, there was remember? a trench something also, um, but battle fatigue as well. well. We've talked about that. Remember, we actually talked yes. about it on the last podcast. Yes. So, I asked, last everyone. I asked a couple people, you know, that were older than me, people that are in their 50s, like, hey, man, you know, what? did you remember as a kid seeing, what, did your parents watch the Vietnam War on the news? Yeah, every night we had da da da. We ate TV dinners, whatever. Do you remember ever hearing PTSD or soldiers that come back from the war that are shell shock or emotional distress or some words like that? Nope, never. So then I thought about it because in that our favorite song, nineteen, no 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 nineteen, they actually say and that song come came out in the eighties and it's it talked about PTSD. It actually used that phrase in the uh, yeah. In the, in the song, and that was in eight late eighties, early nineties. It, it was like eighty five. So it I mean it talked about the average age of the American soldier in Vietnam was nineteen. That's the point of the song. So and in in World War Two was twenty six. So did you watch Das Boot, the German one? Um, yeah, but it's been a long time. They said like they were sixteen year olds on the U boat, bro. Sixteen year olds. That's not surprising. You want to, did you want to read all those? Uh, the other no? ones are called combat stress reaction, post-traumatic stress disorder, P- PTSD, and shell shock. Shell shock. There might which be is a also more. an 80s song, shell shock. Shell shock. I no, it's know, no, it's a like it's it's a European techno song. Perfect. By like Echo and the Bunnymen or something. Shell shock coined in World War One by British psycho psychologist Charles Samuel Myers to describe the type of post-traumatic stress disorder. But I, I guess the, my point is that it never became mainstream until pretty recently. I would Correct. say fifteen to twenty years. Although it was it was in the song nineteen from the eighties, and so I was asking these friends of mine that are older than me because I don't you know I was born in seventy one, so I don't remember Vietnam at all, obviously. So I was never exposed to that word until you know probably the the the, the second um, Gulf War. That's when I first started hearing about the word. This is the thing about PTSD. It 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 came. It, it's an evolution of the battle fatigue, shell shock, all those words. Everything had to do with war. Cor- correct. People did not know. The general public was not aware, or other psychologists, or like we were assuming, or like we're discovering now, that you getting diddled by your by your by your father or grandfather, or getting beat by your dad. Or a priest, or, or whatever. Or verbally abused, or whatever, creates the same effect as being in a war. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially at a young age. Especially yeah. at the impressional age. Uh, pr- impressionable. Because you're not even old enough to even understand to understand it. You know what I mean? Correct. It's just, you don't know what it right, is. It just gets plopped into your head. Correct. And next thing you know, you hear a, a sound and like the undoing of a belt. Or some, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that just creates like a tension because you know that back in the day that was bad. You got beat with. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think um, my father was 46 when I was born. So he was in World War II and Korea where most of my friends' fathers were in Vietnam. So my dad um, was... Forty four, nineteen forty four. He turned eighteen. He went. He enlisted in the army because that's what you do. Even though my grandmother, my abuelita, said, "Cesar, don't do it." Right. My father told me towards the latter years of his life that's what he did. Well, so many people volunteered back Correct. then because they were the truly the greatest generation. They under, They they believed in sacrifice for the greater good and all. That. So I, we've lost a little bit of that. However, I think there would have been a draft. I think everyone. Oh, there was. If, there was right, a draft. Even if you didn't volunteer. Yeah. So he, pretty much eighteen to twenty two. You're. Yeah, Probably so he going. went in at 18, you know, right when the war was wrapping up. I mean, 44, it was 
pretty much over. You know, there was a year left and a well, lot of guys. That was a big part of the fighting, though. That was the right. end fighting when everybody's in their last, you know. Yeah, and right. So my dad was sent to the Pacific Theater, and he never, the, the, my point is this. My dad never talked about the war. Ever, 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 until like the last five years of his life. So, you know, he was in the war at 18. He, about the time he turns 85, he kind of starts talking about it. The one, the, the point of this is that when I was like 14, I went to Hawaii with my parents. And my dad, we were on this like jungle cruise type thing. And my dad did not act normal. On edge? He was weird. He shut up. And my dad talks more than you and I combined. He was a fucking chatterbox. Weird. Wow. Yeah. So he shut up and he got like it, like the energy change. It was weird. And me and my mom were like, what the fuck's going on? So my, after my, my dad, you know, we get back to our little condo or whatever. And I was like, mom, what's up with dad? And she goes, I think this reminds him when, when he was in the Philippines. And then he went to Tokyo for a year and he was in Okinawa. But after the fighting, he landed after the fighting. So right. it shows you that he had PTSD, but he never, ever, ever talked about it for 60 plus years. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. The term was a shell shock. Did you want to read some of that? Because it tells you about PTSD. Uh, the term PTSD disorder came to use in the 1970s in large part due to the diagnosis of U.S. military veterans of the Vietnam War. Officially recognized by the American Psychiatric Association, 1980. Yeah. So remember, this was a, it was only associated with battle, with, with, with war. Right. They didn't, they is in us, none of us are really the connected. population? Yeah. Well, they, I mean, they is in psychoanalysts, people that make these diagnoses, didn't connect it to any trauma. Remember, it's. Post traumatic, the trauma part could be a beating. Yeah, could be correct. molestation. Correct, could be a I, rape. Yeah, you know what I mean. I guess my point is that that in in the show, they they brought up the the, the troops coming back from World War Two and how such a it was forty nine percent had some kind of emotional Mental issue. I yes, read, I correct. Wrote it down. Yep. And it was interesting because I always. Knowing my father and and knowing a couple of his friends that were there, they were so proud and strong and amazing people. And these guys that they were showing were open about talking about their experiences and emotional and and so like they were beautiful people on this show. Nothing like the gentleman that I knew. And that was really surprising to me. And I had no idea they had psychoanalysts talking to World War II vets right after the war. I had no idea. Right. It was shocking to me. Yeah. I, I had the same thing. Uh, World War II, 49% back, sent back due to, I believe they said mental problems, which is weird. But remember, Century Self was written in 2002. It's not exactly the most woke documentary and verbiage because right in the last 20 years how much has ver language changed where yeah. we have offended everyone yeah so screw all that anyway martin bergman is the guy i put down he's the one who helped with this psychoanalysis of the yes of the soldiers and i just loved him in his little cute little germanic voice like i just want to get into the heads and it was is like that the guy that was I, on the train across the country and yeah. i was on the train i wanted to know what was yeah. going on in all the heads and honestly i believe Truly not, not a bad person. Really no, curious. No, he seemed really cool. I, he seems like I you would and totally I, have a beer with that guy. Seems like you and I. Totally curious about the Correct. world. He wanted However, to help people. I don't know about that. That's, That's what the impression I got of him. Right. My point was, I know he just wanted to know about people. I don't know about helping. I don't think he wanted to hurt anyone. No. I'm just saying he wanted to know about them. Like he just wanted to read them, who they were, how they were. He wanted to get inside their head. He lo he was so interested in the types of different people. Yeah. So he's interested in it. But his interest could be blinded because someone's using that interest for a bad purpose. And all he cares about is the interest part because he did what he would do to be interested, but they used that and manipulated it. And it's, that's what's dangerous. I see your point. They didn't allude to any of that, but that I saw, but I see right. what you're saying. But we always talk about it. We've talked about Oppenheimer. You know, I, yeah, I become right, death, right? right? It's like the difference between... Yeah, between the ethics of science is scientists don't ever don't generally consider whether they should do something. 
They only consider if they can do it. Right, of course. So by the time they realize they figured it out and someone used it for some nefarious reason, damn it. Because now the should of, they don't ever look at the, you generally don't look at the should. Because the assumption would be you're not going to use it for evil. Like, yeah, you just go on that side. But turns out we tend to. That's all, all we do. Yeah, I know. I hate people to say equal all. shit. I hate, I, I hate to use absolutes, but that's but always true. We generally lean fifty, at least fifty-one forty-nine on the dark side, my friend. At least fifty-one forty-nine. So, um, what what I found interesting about Bergman too, because that's what they played into next, was he he found how much the enormous role of the irrational in the United States. The enormous role of the irrational. He was talking about how we were supposed to be all happy and how we weren't. How we were suffering. We talk about suffering again. But there are so many philosophies at play there, right? Even outside of the documentary. Because it's not, remember, attachment, according to Buddha, attachment created suffering. Yeah. When we consumed, when they turned us into consumers, the suffering increased. That cre- Well, I think it even created it. Well, they created it first. Yes. Or, or exposed it. Yeah. And then they exacerbated it. By making us consume. So now we have more attachment to more things, which is what Buddha said was the, the cause of suffering. So they're, it's like suffering double fold two different ways. One's mental, one's physical. You know what I mean? It's like weird. Emotional. Yeah. It's, it's like they took Buddha's expression and go, shit, we can capitalize on that if we do the reverse. In a, it in could a, be, yeah. In a weird. But the attachment is what led to the suffering. Correct. So th- they said that they needed to control that. A- and the oppression part is the part that just doesn't work ever. You think? Uh, I would guess. You, you, you can train a dog. You, you can. M- maybe. I can. I did. You're smart. She's a good girl. It's a good girl. It's a good girl. The other ones are questionable. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. We got, when you doggy sit the way you do. I do. And I believe. Uh, it's like Ma- Hotel Peralta over there. <laughs> Hotel Woody. Welcome to the Hotel Dog Fornia. <laughs> I don't know. At Woodsy the Owl Hotel dot com. Oh, maybe you should change it. No. Have you thought about starting a doggy daycare thing and just charging eight gazillion dollars a night like every of these all these other places do? You already have them. I got paid in donuts to watch Oliver. Damn, what kind of I got an apple fritter and a cinnamon roll. What but what uh what kind of don't what company? Or the store? Bosa Donuts. Bosa. My second Shout favorite. Out. Can we uh, do, what's your first favorite? Uh, the Donut Parlor. That's not true until they give us money to talk about it. Uh, however, we should have called, I, I believe they should have been called the Donut Palace. Ooh. That sounds got a nice ring to it. Yeah, but then it would be like Dream Palace if you yeah. typed it in wrong and then you end up at a strip club. If I could take donuts to a strip club, I got no problem with that. Yeah, but what if you, but what if you could just go to the strip club and go get donuts? That's, That's what worst. I'm saying. No, I'd rather have a donut sometimes. I'd rather have both. Well, both of them, but what if you miss out on the donut by going to Dream Palace because you mistyped it in well, with your fat thumbs Well, you can get Uber Eats to deliver to the Dream Palace. You're always thinking, man. Donut Eats. It. Thank you. <laughs> that was excellent. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> Ricky showed his thumb. That was delicious. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks, for, thanks for... You can only say the word delicious when you say it in the checkmark voice. It's delicious. Yeah. Oh, two t-shirts came up with today. Yes. Okay. I'm going to get a personal t-shirt that reads, I keep Megzi in check. <laughs> Spelled C, <laughs> hold on, C-Z-E-C-H. Right. But wait, there's more. I'm getting her a t-shirt that says, I keep check in Megzi. Come on, bro. Bro. That is the best. That's better than I'm with stupid with the little fingers. It's way better. I keep Megzi in check and I keep check in Megzi. Oh, bunch of sexy came bitches. Up with that stuff, man. I am such a genius when you it comes to market. I should market ourselves. You, sh- you hurry up. You know, I still have commercial ideas. Um, Toyota, Kingsford, yeah. uh, you guys need to get back to me because I've Did got. Did you tweet her them? No, I didn't. But when are you going to tweet What will happen is this I'm going to pitch the idea and they're going to say no and, and then, then they're going to do it. it. And then I'm going to have to feel like the intermittent wiper guy for 30, 40 years trying to chase down my money. The intermittent wiper guy, yeah. yeah. You hear about the intermittent? I did, I did. Okay, yeah, the intermittent wiper guy. Yeah. He invites the intermittent wiper. He goes, hey, Buick, I got this. I think it was Buick. Hey, I got this great idea. Check it out. They're like, 
That's stupid. And then like a year later, they come up. You know, I heard last week, David Lee Roth was hired to do the, I told you this at dinner no, uh, at Ocean 44. David Lee Roth was hired to do the Beverly Hills 90210 theme song. Oh, yeah. He wrote the song and they didn't like it. It turns out to be one of my favorite David Lee Roth songs after he left Van Halen. Uh, Considered just like, almost every other David Lee Roth song is a cover. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm just kidding. so I'm just, kidding, uh, just the gigolo is a horrible ass song. It's mm-hmm. called Just Like Paradise. Cat wish they. I know he did with the hand hail, right? California Girls. No, that was. Oh, that was him solo. Yeah. Too. So if you, <laughs> terrible. So if you listen to Just Like Paradise and you listen to the opening song of 90210 from the late 80s with Luke Perry and Jason Priestley, Brian they Austin sound Green. very, very similar. They do. Back I to do. you, check mark. That's beautiful. Check mark. So I want to keep Megzy in chick. And Megzy wants to keep checking Megzy. <laughs> she like you dirty bastard. She's dirty. No, no, check mark's dirty. She's pretty clean. Let's move along. Yeah, sir. let's move along. What we got next? I got uh the next segment was when was it Sigma Sigmund Freud's niece or daughter? Anna. Daughter would be daughter Anna. is Anna Freud. Yes. She kind of, I don't want to use the word adopted, but not legally adopted, but she took in, she took in four kids that was a very close family friend got divorced and they were suffering from anxiety and a couple of them were acting out. So she took them in, they were in England and no, sorry, Vienna. And she basically had psychoanalysis sessions with the four kids to help them become more well-adjusted and use them as a sort of psychoanalysis template on how to adjust human behavior. Yeah, to help suppress these irrational things, right? Correct. They felt, they as being Sigmund, Anna, and Bernays. Correct. uh, They felt that right beneath the skin was all this uh, just rage ready to come out, this evilness, and you had to suppress it. Always. And one of the one of the four kids, they believed a little boy, they thought he was going to be gay. So right. they were trying to keep him from being gay. They, well, they, they interviewed his son. They interviewed the son they of one of the boys. They interviewed the son Correct. of the boy that was being psychoanalyzed. One of the four. Back in the day. Right, one of the four. And he said, I think they were trying to change. And I don't know if my father was gay or not, but I think they were trying to change homosexual behavior. His, uh, possible. To possibly not be homosexual gay. Homosexual right. behavior. Because it wouldn't have been normal in that's, society. That's the word he used. And that was the thing. It wouldn't be normal. When he said normal, I was like, man, that's fucked and up. And when you hear normal and suppress, you just shake your head and go, there was from, say, 19, let's say 1920. Let's just be kind, even though it was World War, coming out of World yeah, War Yeah, this I. was like in 1950. Right. But I'm saying, for now 30 years, suppress, suppression, and control. Yes. Which is nothing's That's, changed. Once again, one and a half generations. Well, this is this we're now in 2020 and is that 70 years ago and we're still about control. A little bit. A little bit. There but there's a lot of chaos without a structure to it. Well, yeah, which but, is oh. which is a problem, right? That's also a problem. Yes, what we're doing is we're exposing the control systems. Right. And we're lashing out against them, but it's not structured. So it's like we're going to it's going to be a riot. And who knows if it's going to actually solve anything is my concern. Right. And that goes back to your statement of we can't burn down a system if you don't have a system in place to replace it. Yes. I understand. Let's move on. It's not part of the conversation, bro. Okay. I had the go the ahead. Let's finish had, up with with the family. Well, the thing I had next was Dictor, but, but Dictor. was was <laughs> Dictor. Damn, I didn't barely know even know her. I didn't even know her. <laughs> Wrecked him. Damn near killed him. Shit. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, Woodsy was shooting lasers at me like lasers. thirteen seconds ago, and now we're laughing together. This, oh, is, this is our relationship. Um, but yeah, to Anna's point and all that, they were trying to suppress things. They were trying to suppress the, the sadness and the anger and the darkness that was in them. Of those four kids. That's right. And that was what psycho, psychoanalysts did. That's what Freud's thing was, is suppression. It wasn't work with it. It was push it down. Keep fighting it. Keep fighting it. See, I never really, hearing Freud and Anna, I didn't, 
I didn't pick up on that, I guess. And, right. I, and I paid attention when I watched these. I wasn't like daydreaming or mopping the floor or something. I never really picked up on they were trying to oppress or suppress those emotions. I didn't get that. I don't think they ever told you how they were okay, doing Okay, so it. you picked up on that and I didn't. No, it wasn't. They didn't say it. This is what they said. They said, we believe that inside every human being's evil. They never talked about how they solved the problem. Why would they give away their trade secrets? Do you know what I mean? Like in an interview? Right. I wouldn't say, we're going to suppress them. Like, why... They, they wouldn't say suppression's the key. She goes, we have the answer, right? Why would you give a, why would you divulge a secret if you thought you knew the, if you thought you knew the secret, why would you give it to everybody? Because it, yeah. it's yours, you know? Right, I mean, uh, yeah. I, I, I just don't know. I see that's your a, point. That's I totally point. see your point. I, I don't know if that's accurate, but that's how I would be. I wouldn't be like, oh, well, step one is we kind of make them suppress their shit. You know, no, like, but I mean, or do you, like you said, hey, tell me about your feelings. Why are you feeling, I know you're 10, I, I, you, oh, your parents are divorced. You missed your dad. Tell me about your feelings. Why are you feeling anxious? Oh, okay. Well, you're, it's okay that you feel that way. It's completely justified. You know, you, are you working? Are you, I mean, a psycho That's analyst, today. right? Okay. So this is in 1950. So it's vastly different, right? So you're talking to Anna Freud and you're 10. So is she trying to coax you to push you down a road of, to suppress those feelings? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Oh, that's what I got out of. Okay. A, oh. By the time the end of this happened, that's what I got okay. from it. All right. But go ahead. Keep no, going. I, I, no, I'm keep just trying to think question. of like right. if you're in that room, yes. with a ten year old boy and Anna Freud, and your 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 mother brought you and your three siblings to her because you're recently divorced and the, the relationship ended badly, and it's a different world. 1950 divorce was not common, and I can't imagine the taboo behind that. It's you know you're you're in post. You're five years after World War II ended, and you're in Europe, and you're you're not socially adjusted, and you're just a child. How I'm trying to think objectively how that how those sessions would have went, and yeah. what and how she would have steered them to be more well adjusted in society. And you're right, suppression of anxiousness or anger or the or a couple of the kids they said were lashing out. So that means anger and rage and tantrums and yeah possibly violence towards their siblings i would guess i don't know that or others yeah oh yeah yeah so i'm just curious how those would have went this is what i got from the show Mm -hmm. their philosophy caused them they said the answer was in order to fit in the society you had to be like everyone else in the society isn't that the best it like I said, it's the engineer. It's this whole. It was their control. It was democracy their way. It had to be done their way in their mind. So what they did was any feeling that is outside of this box of normalcy. Mm, okay. Don't have those feelings. <laughs> like seriously, like okay, you know you're feeling that way. Well, just push it down. You right, but they way? It, they Make didn't say not. that. No, but they that's just, what I got they, from it. They massaged it in a way so that it would be pushed down. Right, but I don't know how. I don't know how. Right, okay. I don't know of the course. technique we don't, that we don't Anna know. had. Was it like, hey, when you feel that way, have you ever thought about like not think feeling that way? Versus <laughs> versus like, I would think in a very, fro- like in yes. a Germanic way, the it's Freudian. like, you feel X, you must feel Y. Yes. Change now. Right. Like that's kind of how I'd feel. Like. Or is and it, that's neg- where, it was negative reinforcement. And that's why it's bad. And that's why I think the suppression part was just a push it down. Yeah. And that's how it explodes because that pressure builds up when you push down. Mm-hmm. So I think it was that way because the result was obviously devastating. Yes. Um. So do that's let's so close weird. that whole thing about them because they do talk about it later. Because it is chronological, but it's good to just close it now. One of them, one of the women kills herself, takes takes sleeping pills, doesn't wake up. When she's an adult. O- overdose. One right. of those four kids. Right. One of those four kids eventually kills herself. She right? overdosed she sleeping on pills. sleeping pills. Right. So that's just, that's not good. That, that shows you that, to me, it, it was, Anna Freud was experimenting with those four kids. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they never said that. That was how I perceived and, it. In a bigger scale, Bernays was experimenting with the entire American population. Yeah, absolutely. It was all one giant experiment. Yeah, I agree. Public relations, Informa- information bureau. Yeah, well, I have that on oh, yeah, there, we too. we have that, too. Middle America one, yeah. That's amazing. Okay, so we've got Ernest Dichter. Dichter. Who comes up with the focus group. Is that what you have next, or what do you no. have next? No. 
Okay, go with. I have that second next. Okay, well, you go next then. Ne- you next. 1946, the National Mental Health Act. That was by President Truman? Yes. I'm answering my own questions. Mark, you can go now. Uh, this act was Hi, to. Hi, everybody. Bye. Adios. Uh, this act was to teach Americans how to control their unconscious drives. They didn't say that. Right. But that's what it was. Uh, oh, you mean suppress? Yeah, it's exactly <gasps> what it is. It keeps coming back to suppression, man. In a democracy, in freedom, right? Freedom and suppression. It's like, that doesn't, that doesn't sound right. It's completely backwards. Yeah, it's oxymoronic. Basically. So uh, psychological centers were set up all over the country. They weren't called that, but they were. And people were counseled. Counselors were trained in marriage counseling. Social workers were sent out to talk to people so that their America didn't turn into Nazi Germany. That's yeah, it was all followed off of this psychoanalyst. Yes. It was still a theory because, like you said, they're, we're going to get into what happens. But at the time, they were all in on this being the, the cause. It seemed to have enough evidence at the time to support what Freud was saying. So they felt this was the way to do it. I, again, I just think that the, the government was afraid. Yeah. But the point is, they, you, but the way being afraid of it and finding the real cause and it being correct are two very different oh, things. Oh, absolutely. So they were, their fear caused them probably to jump a little earlier than go, let's really check into what, what this is about. That's why I said the pendulum swing. I mean, yeah. it was like a violent It was a snapback. It was like a flip yes. of a switch is what it felt like. Yes. It, it, but it's so, and that happens all the time where the pendulum swings in the other direction. And it, it's, it's, it's the overcorrection. And it's a massive overcorrection. We never live in the middle, man. I, that's exactly we why I brought it up. We only live through the middle. Yeah. It sucks. I hate, I know it sounds, sometimes we sound like we're doing a bitch fest. And, but in this case, it truly sucks to live through the middle and not in the middle. Unions, they were all on this side and being the owners of mines were oppressing children and killing people and having no safety regulations, right? Unions come in, pendulum swings, and it's awesome. Unions are needed. We need people to live longer and get paid better and have better conditions, right? Working conditions. But then that pendulum swings, the government catches up, writes some laws already that protect workers, but then the pendulum goes and the union gets too strong. Now the union's all the way on this side and now everyone's like anti-union because the union gained all this power yeah. that it never needed to because yeah. absolute power corrupts absolutely. Right. And then what happens? They destroy that system and that pendulum comes swinging all. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no happy medium. never settles, man. We only live through the middle. Look at our, look at, I mean, politically speaking right now, we're more on the extremes than we've ever been. Yep. And that's social media, certainly putting us on the polls because it's put, not only is it asking us to be something, to tell our statement, that statement puts us in with a group with the other people who say the same statement. Yeah. And, and it doesn't put you in with other people to discuss. Yeah. And you mentioned on, on last, the last part one podcast, how you're, you can't be pigeonholed into one political way because, hey, I'm pro this yeah. and also pro that, which doesn't meet one political agenda. Yeah. So you can't, there's no way to, you can't pigeonhole checkmark because it's, there's checkmark no. Checkmark cannot be holding the pigeon, no. No birdies. No bird. Oh. That bird is not a pigeon. This bird will not fly. Where is my bird? I knew you were going to say that. My bird. I know. Okay. We are a top <laughs> bird from uh, Iron Man 2. Yes. Thank you, Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke. No, uh, true. And I'm not going to hash out what it is, but right. you have but no idea. But I think idea. that was a good point. Right. Once again, I get, I've get. i gotten texts, and I don't know if I'm going to share them on the not conscious, but we've gotten texts recently with this political bullshit. My mother that's got be one over. on my phone yesterday. Your mother? Your madre? Helen. Helen. Would you like oh, to it vote is Helen. for... That's, that's why my you mom. Sent it. I would, didn't... I totally didn't make... I'm like, look, even Woodsy got called something wrong. Yeah, Woodsy Allegedly got called my Sabian. mom. Sabian. I guess Sabian's worse than Helen. It's a cool name. No, it Sabian's is. Sabian's kind of a cool name, but like, not if it's not your name. Not if your name's Mark. Sabian sounds like a dog's name. It probably is, or like... It sounds like evil. Sabian. Well, that sounds like Satan. A little bit. Like Damien is what it sounds yes. like. Sabian, Damien. Is Sabian so, like Omen Part Two? It could be. It could be Part Tres. Oh, Jace. Because they had Part De and Part Tres, <laughs> so you got to have a different language. And then you have Part Fia is four oh, in German. Oh, nice. And then and then Italian is five. Yeah, set 
or whatever. Sure. It's five. It's five. Yes, Italian's five. Yes, sounds very Italian. I, yeah, I speak Italian. Buongiorno. <laughs> <laughs> was that glorious? It was. Buongiorno. I speak Italian. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yes, to your point, um, you can. We've been getting these texts, and I get I get somebody telling me that one person wants to take my guns away, and I'm like, well, if your wife got shot in the head, you'd probably have a different opinion about guns, wouldn't you? And then, so that guy, that person probably thinks I'm anti-gun, right? Right. Do they? They don't do you, know you. Yeah, they don't know me for shit. And what's funny is, I'm consciously doing these things, and I'm trying to make change. No, because, you're not consciously doing these oh, things. Oh, that's only because I got knocked. You're you are welcome from years ago. That's five. Five years. Five years. Um, but the point is, I'm kind of messing with the algorithms by uh, zagging uh, yes. all the time on purpose. Yes, I know. It's amazing. Now, the funny thing about that is, do you know how easily I am to manipulate? Yeah, I know. I'm just as easily Mark, manipulatable. Don't stop. Right. Done. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and it's like, I dare you not to you drink go. that Coke Zero. Right. Exactly. Done. <laughs> yep. See? <laughs> go. Easy. But, but th- nobody gets that, dude. Nobody else seems to, and that's what's fun about it. Text stop if you'd like to re- stop receiving don't, these. Don't tell me what to don't, do. You're First not the boss all, of me. And secondly, why am I working for you now? Because you're making me do a task? That's the thing. They're they're programming me. Text stop. They If I text stop, they know that I at least read their message. Correct. That's not going to... That's that, All that means is that a message is going to come from another phone number. I, that's why I just blocked the number I, and delete it. I tell it. them to fuck off. And, or I start an engagement. Well, tell me, you know, hey, vote for this president because they're going to protect Sierra Club or they're going to protect the thing like Sierra Club. I go, oh, are they going to protect your white nationalist uh, the leader of your the creator, the founder of your club, the white nationalist? Are they going to protect his his uh, the views? Founder of Sierra Club was a white nationalist. A racist. Oh, really? They find out he is a white. He's like a white supremacist. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Sierra Club was only for white people, bro. Oh, really? And that was like there was an article just released in July of this year. July. July this year. <laughs> so it, it's not like once again, kind of like the other systems, like the church that we've uncovered, the and this and the other stuff. All this stuff was obviously held back, hidden, and now it's been exposed because eventually everything gets exposed. So why why get put yourself in that in the first place? Why not do it this way? Expose yourself. Boom. No, you get arrested if you expose yourself. I know. That's why I said it. <laughs> Hashtag expose yourself, uh, bro. Yeah, don't expose yourself. So uh, <laughs> I've already exposed myself. I'm like, you're topless all the goddamn time. We've had fraternity parties, Ow. sir, to which I was naked. To which? At which I was naked. What? Completely. Why? You don't remember? Was there floppage? There w- no, ball in hand. Balls in hand. <laughs> Twig and berries in hand. All of it. All of it in hand. I can't. Sp- I can't dox people. But somebody's current wife was completely naked. Myself was completely naked. Matt Specker was completely naked, and he gets it because he was naked at all parties. I don't Matthew know what you're Specker. talking about. Yeah, he was the one. He's the one who got us all naked on our... He'd drink and he'd get naked. That's what we did at parties, man. We didn't do anything with it. We just walked around naked. That's so weird. Yeah. And remember how, like, super fat I was? Like, yeah. Like, just... It wasn't even floppage. It was just jiggling. Yeah, everyone... It nobody was all can, jiggly, Nobody can see you jiggling in your chair, dude. No, but it makes that sound when I do the... Yeah, it's can all we, can, can we please move along? We can, maybe. God, I'm suffering. Are you? Well, yes. it's, oh, we need to suppress those feelings, sir. Okay, and suppressed. Okay, go. So you found the next thing was your Betty Crocker thing? No. Next thing is your focus group. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Bernie's in the focus group and oh, then Betty sure. Crocker. Because uh, Ernest Dichter. The Institute for Motivational Research. Loved it. Welcome to the Institute of Motivational Research, where we get people to do what we want. Humans are fundamentally irrational beings this was the birth of the focus group that was the premise yeah go check mark all right so betty betty crocker betty crocker betty crocker betty crocker 50s come around they're trying to people are trying to make easier make it easier for people to bake and cook and whatever still traditional households generally the man's working generally the woman's at home the home keeping the house with the kids keeping the house making the house Harder work than what the man was doing. Absolutely. That was that was a shit job. 
in my opinion. Because they didn't have like DVDs with Little Mermaid and shit. Oh, yeah, that's true too. I didn't even think about that. But just, it just seems like a lot of work. Yeah. It seems like women bore the brunt of the of lot, a lot more work than ever is given credit. Especially possibly. then, it was a different world. Yeah. I mean, totally. you had cloth diapers and, oh, yeah. you know, it you was. Washed them. Yeah. Shit. I don't know. It's Safety weird. pins and shit. Yeah. So they had these easier to make meals or whatever. And Betty Crocker's cake mix came under attack because um, it was basically. They didn't come under attack. Well, not under attack, but their sales were crap. That's correct. They were just, they were just not. Everyone said they'd be okay with it in the focus group. But when it came out, they're like, it was the sales were, the sales Corbett. were not. Yeah, uh, it wasn't selling. Good. So they tried to, they kind of had a focus group specifically about. Why was it selling poorly? Why is this cake mix not doing well? And basically it was just add water and whatever, right? Basically is all it was. But what was, what was the problem, sir? Do you remember what it was? Yes. The unconscious guilt of the ease and convenience. There it is. Customer felt hidden guilt for the ease and convenience. So, check mark. How was this how was this conquered by the Betty Crocker company? What I loved was this next guy that comes on. Yeah, he's old, amazing. He I, I he loved was just him so too. open and transparent. Yeah, he's amazing. And he I I would have a beer with that guy. All right. For sure. And I don't remember his name. I, I don't either. I don't think I took his name. I don't even, they showed it, I'm sure, but really. They did. And he goes, well, guilt was a barrier. Correct. So the barrier, what we had to do, remove the barrier. Like, that's, yeah. let's just pull it out of the way. So we have to remove the barrier of guilt by having the customer participate. And he's, and you're like, so the guilt of the ease and convenience so you, that's guilt. So you have to remove the barrier. So, okay, so don't make it as easy and convenient. So you have to actually do something now. Besides adding water. Besides just mixing it in a circle. Yeah. And what did they come up with, sir? They added an egg. What? What? <laughs> they added an egg. Yeah. They put add an egg in the recipe. Yes. Right? On the back of the box. Yes, sir. And then sales skyrocketed. And then... The guy, though, the way he's like, we had him at an egg. And he just looked at you with this smug, like, I just controlled every woman. I don't know. I got that really odd feeling from that guy. Yeah. Or it's just, I controlled something. Like, he's like, we had him at an egg. Look how simple. We just controlled everyone. Like, yeah. it just felt, he had almost his pride in how simply, how simple we are. Oh, and yeah. how easy it was for them that guy or that group to get us to do something. Absolutely right. It was kind of scary. Yes. Scary. Very telling, sure. So at the egg, un- it was unconscious symbol that the wife mixes in something for her husband. Correct. And they said sales soared. Yes. I, was, I thought skyrocketed as well. I had to go back to the team. No, I didn't. I, well, I didn't quote the, you know. I, I, w- I actually had no, I had notes that read skyrocketed. And I had to correct it. Okay. Whatever, whatever no, it takes. It's all good, man. And then my favorite quote. Yes. Is that where you're at? I have several favorite quotes, but okay. I will let you go first. Well, no, please. You have several. I'm not going to steal your thunder. Okay. I just love that guy. Same guy yeah, with, with whom we're going to have a beer. He goes, is it wrong to give people what they want by removing their defenses? I had that as well. And you're just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, seriously. Is it wrong to- He's telling us, how do you know what I want? How does he know that I don't, that I want it? Right. So is it wrong to give them what they want? He's assuming that he knows what we, what we want by removing their defenses. So he's assuming it. And by that, he's removing a specific defense. Yes. So he's actually removing the defense that gets his desired outcome. Yet to sell his product. Right. Cause he's assuming he's saying what they want is what I want them to want. Correct. So it's actually, is it wrong to give people what I want them to want by removing the defenses? Yes. And yes. Cause that smug look on that guy's face, he was just like, I have all these people in the palm of my hand. They're like putty. That's it. I'm just going to tie the strings to them and just marionette. Yeah. The pup master of puppets. All right, man. The other two things I had were on that was, that a consumer may have needs that they don't even understand themselves and that he, well, and, and the other guys that were involved with this, 
did this to quote unquote fully exploit the customer. Yeah. And I thought that was is obviously that's an amazing businessman, but that's fucking horrible. Exploit? He used the word exploit. That is not very human of him. No, it's fucking or, terrible. Well, actually, it's not humane of him. Correct. Probably very human of him, but not humane of him. Um, can you read that the 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 first part of that again, please? Because I have a consumers thought. may have needs that they don't even understand themselves. There it is. They may have needs that they don't even understand, but somehow these pricks know what those needs are. No, they don't. Of course they don't. They they know what they want their needs to be. Yeah, they're trying to sell shit. Right. So they know what their needs, what they right. need them to be, and then they use that to figure out which which one, which def- barrier to take down. Correct. It's not altruistic by any means. It's completely no. manipulative. It's a sales tactic. Completely manipulative. It's re- it's I mean, it's impressive. It's brilliant. But we are just all guinea pigs, man. And that's the thing, man. You and I we're still in the system. We know we have to work it because there's not really a way around it completely without living in a tent underneath an overpass or something. But at least we're a little cognizant of these things to make our lives a little bit more aware of it. True. A lot of people just go through zombie land, man. Just A to B to C, just in that linear order. True. Thank God for tangents. Yeah. Dot net. Totally. All right. Uh, unconscious symbol wife needs some of their husband sales sword. Yeah. Or is it wrong to give people what they want? Removing defenses. You've got your part. Sometimes people have un- needs. They don't even know they want, but we know that what they want. So we'll give it to them or we'll make, we'll actually, we'll pick at the scab that makes them want. That is really what they're doing or they're pushing the right sensor. The yeah. Right button. Yeah. Cause, cause in order for them to exploit, to exploit what they want, they have to know what they want and there's no way you can. I could have a need or a desire that's different than yours. Of course. But if it's not a singular desire that everyone can get to and make, make their sales go up, right? They make a singular desire for everyone. We would move that barrier. Now everyone feels that way. Brilliant. And I, now I want a Guinness because they I knew the advertisers got me, bro. Bastards. Advertisement. What was the other quote that you had, sir? Uh, to fully exploit the customer. And then you stole my other one. Removing their defenses. Got it. That was it. I stole it. You had. You just had more than I did. That's cool. That's cool. And then they went to the commercial, which we did reference in the first one. Oh, oh it yeah. seems so much longer there than was a, last there was a, year. It was a car commercial. And yes. And the salesman was... Nearly four inches longer than some models. The car salesman was talking to a married couple. Oh. And the, and, the, and the wife gets in the car, and she borderline has an orgasm when she sits down. It's pretty awesome. It was beautiful. It, there was no sexual overtones in that commercial at all. Not at it's all. It's like 1953, and it right. was like... It was pretty provocative. Saying four inches longer, you know what they were talking about when she recognize that it's so much longer than last year. And then she sits in the car. Uh, and go, <gasps> oh. <sighs> she even closed her eyes, almost flutters her eyeballs in like, her back of her uh, head. Is there a midget on the floorboard or what's going on? You know, they're just like that's how women I mean, act. little person there there was a misogyny there. There was a there was a system in place that within that system that's how you got around, right? That's like, oh flatter you know, flatter the guy and do that. That's still done a lot today. I mean it's part of evolution. It's part of the oh, evolutionary. Yeah, of course. It's like why, why male pheasants have the, the plume, right? It's yeah. For the attraction. Like of course. We, we show. We want a bigger car. We show by lifting heavy things. Heavy things. And women are just gorgeous. Chicks live it, love it when we lift heavy things. Gorgeous. Women are just gorgeous. We're just all function. Women are form. And that's not. That's it is a what it is. Generalization. That is but not. That's one the way of, it's been but, since right, of time. It's not 100% true. Women can do everything men can do. I love it when women lift heavy things. Yeah. When Ixiana Bayul, I don't know. Best. No, there's some beefy women. I know. I love no. beefy women. But anyway, so men are, but men are more function. Like, let's be honest. Duh. We're, we're that's just, all we got. Yeah. That's all we got. We ain't got much. And razors to shave our, the hair off our chests. <laughs> just <laughs> All right. Four. Uh, What's next, big man? I had a Dictor slogan. Who, because Ernest, <laughs> Ernest Dichter, it's funny every after, time. I know, Ernest Dichter, after the four inch longer car, um, he was he became a millionaire in like the fifties. <laughs> like 
a millionaire. Like, think oh, this about, was the focus group guy. Yeah. Yes, he the did. The dicker guy became a millionaire. And you're like, back then? Yeah, which means... That's a lot. That's, that's a lot of money. A million in 1955 is... Uh, gotta be 10? 10 times? It, way, more? I mean, way 20? more than 10 times. 20 times? I'm uh, whatever. Not, I'm not going to look it up. Re- yeah, I'm not either. But regardless of that, it's definitely a different. A million dollars now is different than a million dollars then. And I'm not even close to $100 now. Right? So, C note, bitches. I'm at thirty eight dollars and sixty four cents. Sixty four cents. Um, yeah, but what was uh, his quote? Sir? His slogan? Yeah, a tiger in your tank, bro. Oh my god! Rawr. Wasn't that Exxon? Was that Exxon or no Texaco? Was it Mobile? Mobile? I believe it was Mobile. Mobile is a tiger. And I believe tank? so. And then e- Texaco became a tiger. Now Exxon Exxon bought Mobile. Oh, that's right, Exxon Mobile. That's right. Yeah, Tiger in Your Tank was one of his slogans. Rawr. <laughs> Be the tiger, man. Be the tiger. Became a millionaire. Marketing of Barbie used children's focus group. I got that. Okay, and I don't. Then, okay, well, allegedly, allegedly, the marketing of Barbie dolls were by a children's focus group. Yes, so that is all correct. Of it. So look where Barbie is now. Still alive and kicking. Huge, huge market. Huge. Huge. Huge in America. Huge. Even huge. though she's changed. She's huge. I don't know. Has they changed? I don't know if they've changed hair colors and body style. Oh, yeah. There's all kinds. There's a there's brown Barbie. Ones. There's an African-American Barbie. There's all the Barbies. She's got the- I love she, it. She got the Jeep. Yeah, so she it's got grown. the Corvette. So not only is it did it launch, it's like expanded. Because yeah, it's everywhere. Right. It's beautiful. Ken. It's awesome. Kids focus group. They use kids to market that shit. That's the thing about Disney, man. I- I, I admire the model, but it kind of just is like, hey, kids, tug on your parents' pant legs until they buy the di- the Bambi for you because it's going to go back in the vault. That, mommy, mommy, mommy. It's marketing at its finest, dude. Tuggy, tuggy, tuggy. Yeah, I know. That's my point. I admire it, but it's like, ex- once again, I'm like one of, I'm one of these exploiting exploitation of kids is not really my thing. It's the worst one because they, they don't it's have It's not consent. exploitation of kids. They do. They, they, they directly talk to the children to get to bug their parents to get them it. It's my opinion. I understand. I see your point. It's brilliant. I mean, it works. It's effective. But they're literally telling you because they're using, oh, my God, kid, you're going to lose, miss out. They're not telling the parent that they're going to miss out on buying it for their kid. I, I know. Hey, hey, imagine if their Disney commercials are like, hey, parents, spend thirty nine ninety nine right now for your kids. Thank you. Bye. Of course. I, I get I I understand, dude. I know you know. That's why I keep pushing. <laughs> you dick face. Because I know you, the truth's going to come out, man. I hate you so much. All right, what you got next? Uh, This might be the shortest this, podcast ever. Not even close. I have like four paragraphs left. Oh, here. beautiful. Seriously, the That's shortest good. podcast ever? How many? No, we're already over our shortest one. Oh, no. Um, it's four. You know how it's four inches longer than the last podcast? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my next. <gasps> oh. Uh, Blah, 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 blah. My next point is uh, about self-image. Okay. If you identify yourself with a product, it can have therapeutic value. Yes. And therefore improve society. I had something in between there, if I may. Please, of course. Something about controlling mass irrationality. That's really what this all came down to. And they thought they were crea- creating the conditions for democracy. Yes. The conditions for democracy. It's interesting. Which I know it, we talked about. We had democracy prior to the conditions for democracy. For which, fucking 200 years. We so, had democracy. 180, whatever. Yeah, it was so, called And democracy. we talked about, when part one, we talked about consumerism and democracy and how the show says how closely that they're attached to each other. And and I know, and I, I like to repeat that I don't think they need to be, I think they can be independent of each other. So I will restate that and, I'll, and then we'll leave it at that. Please restate one more time. I believe consumerism and democracy, a democratic society, don't have to be intertwined. Correct. I agree. So, but the show states that they they, they go hand in hand, that they're completely intertwined. Well, yeah. The democracy, too, it, it depends what a democracy is. Because say the, dem- say the way that it become the state takes over businesses so they don't exploit customers. Right. By selling them things that they a, a once a desires versus a needs. Right. Because that's what this has become. That's what consumerism is. It's about wanting things, not about needing things. 
if the government jump, jumps in and goes, well, we want to be a democracy, well, then you have to not let companies be free to exploit people and make the most money out of their products. So you have to control them somehow. So is that now not a democracy? Yeah, a, a, comp, a, a government stepping in and, and restricting companies on what they can sell. Or sounds, how much they can sell. That exploit. sounds like communism. That doesn't sound good, right? Correct. So that, but that spits in the face of, commu- of democracy, yes, right? Yes, yes. But in order to get you to not exploit, right, if the companies are allowed to be as free as they are to do what they want, we've got consumerism. So they are linked. Democracy yeah. and consumerism are linked in that direct fashion because the democracy allows the, the company to exploit the consumer to make them want to buy more. By removing that, you'd need some kind of control on those companies. That would probably be done by the government. That then re- removes the democracy part. They I, fucked us, bro. I see your point. I they don't. F- they fucked us. What we need is actually the company to have a conscious consciousness to them a get conscience shit. a conscience that's like ethics let's and get morals back. we don't need stockholders we don't need stocks we don't need to grow the way this is growing what we do need is to provide a service or product for customers as they need it correct but they won't do and that and then like you've mentioned last they, week we need to go back to capitalism where the profit is reinvested in the company yes yes so that's, that's not never going to happen, happen because we're free to exploit as we want. The question is this. Do you want freedoms with them exploiting you? And you and I are conscious of it. So we don't, we're not consumers. I am nothing like a consumer like I was even a year ago, two years ago, five years ago. Yeah. I used to, I used to just buy ev- you know what I mean? Buy everything. I used to be obsessed with, because I felt that gave me, you know, yeah. filled a gap, right? Yeah, of kind course. Of was, but I was part of that problem, especially with tech, like mm-hmm. computers and electronics and whatnot. Um, but now it's not like that for me. We got a we got a Roomba for downstairs on Prime Day. Mm-hmm. Megzi's like, "Hey, we're looking at a room." I'm like, "You were?" I, like, I had two of them way back in the day, and like, I never even thought about buying one another one ever again. I love that she was into it, but it was like, and we did get one, which is cool. We got a good deal. Thank you, Amazon. Thanks, Amazon Prime. But um, so that's the thing. Do we allow the democracy, the freedoms? So the com- but the companies are free to exploit us, but we have to be very vigilant about not being exploited. And that's that's an issue. That's an issue because a distraction of the light worlds. You know, I got soccer practice. I got my job. I got three jobs. You know, all that stuff. Or do we suppress the companies via some government structure? And now we're not. That's not free anymore. Then. Because what what won't government get into then at that point? And I that's my opinion. That would also snowball, wouldn't it? Just like they got, just it would it would get out of control. Yes. Just like the Patriot Act, Patriot Act got out of control. Yes. Like Edward Snowden, in my opinion, is pretty heroic. I agree. What he exploited, what he shared, was all of all of that data, and zero of it led to any arrest of any kind. Zero. Of all that data, of all the monitoring and everything, mm-hmm. it's. I'm a constitutionalist. I believe in personal accountability. I wish the companies would be into personal accountability. They're in it for themselves, dude. Well, they're in it for the money, which allows them to, to cheat a little bit. I think, in my opinion, maybe you know, fudge the rules a little bit. Maybe lean on a line. Not you know cross how it, bend you, it. you know the expression. Obviously, you do. Enemy of the state. Yeah. It sounds like the government is the enemy of the state because they did that and then nothing came of it, but they got to spy on us. Yeah. On every American citizen. Yep. For, was it 17, 10 years, seven years, eight years, whatever. whatever it doesn't it matter. Uh, one day is too on. much. Why? Right. right. And this is the thing. We are, if, if, if you think, and I'm, I'm speaking with everyone who's listening, if you think that the United States is not the best possible place to be, I'm not saying it's the best place to be, but potential. Oh, yeah. Possible. With its freedoms, with its ability of speech, its ability of expression, religion, the individual right is the only, it's recognized in 
the documentation that cr- that founded this country. If you don't, if if you don't, if you don't think it's like the best place in the world, seriously, there's a challenge there. But there's problems with that freedom. So the question is, the tra- it's net, it's a trade off. Of course, yeah. Do we trade off these amazing freedoms for a security? Right. That's what Patriot Act was. Bullshit. Bullshit, in my opinion. It is worth that. It is worth that risk of le- of you know don't not letting the terrorists win by stopping and shutting things down by still living. It's it's worth the freedoms to have those as a tr- as horrible as they are those atrocities that we have like club shootings and mm-hmm. and things. It's my opinion that it is greater that. 330 million have people have individual rights and are truly pretty free, truly free. Are you right? Yeah. I mean, I understand. Truly free to be kind of who they want to be. And yes, 50 people die here and 20 people die there. And that is awful. But it's, first of all, there's way more deaths like that in other countries. Yeah. Right. It's very true. And they don't have that the freedoms that we have to be able to do all the stuff we want to do. Like we we are blessed. Now, are we doing it correctly? Probably not. I mean, there's always ways to improve, and we need to improve because there's still problems. But I think that's what's the freedoms are worth the problems, in my opinion. I don't know if I agree. We don't need to. That's why, man. That's, that's why I what said that it. is. What's great about what's your thought? America is that we're. It's okay if we disagree. Yeah. And my, I just, I'm, I'm sad and I'm bothered by the fact that in 2020, there are so many people that can't disagree and have a civil discourse about it. It's now this. You and I can just, we disagree on all kinds of shit. We do. And I mean, I'm more liberal and you're more conservative and that's, right. I, and I love you like a brother. You're center left, I'm center right. Yeah, but that, we, but, we still and, have center in our names. Well, y- yes, yes, absolutely. Let's not kidding But ourselves. we disagree on all kinds of shit. I don't absolutely. give a fuck about hockey. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. And uh, fuck the Dodgers. Fuck the Dodgers and their bullpen. I have zero faith in them. I like Dodge ball. Do- yes. I dodge ball. If you can dodge a hammer, you can dodge a ball. If you can dodge a hammer, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> Um, but I, I, I wish that we, we could get somebody left and get somebody right and sit in a room and just have a talk, a civil, calm conversation where tempers do not rise. And I'm, I don't like the fact that that's not happening. There's no, like the conditions are set. So tempers can't rise. Cause we're just talking. Correct. At least starting off. That's where we're at. Yeah. Like I need to know where you're at before I need to know how to get to in the middle. Right. Like, yeah, I look, I need but to that, know what sport you're playing before I can get on the same field. But that goes back to what you said about the pendulum. Yeah. What well, you said, we, 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 we live through the middle, live through the middle, right? We don't live in the middle. Yeah. And that's, and that's a great way to state, where we are in 2020 and that it that sounds like a t-shirt yeah that's the third t-shirt you need to do Hashtag check megzy megzy check through the middle dude checking megzy was awesome <laughs> keeping oh, checking megzy was great um so no i love your thoughts on that what are your what what about tell me your disagreement like expound a little bit on the disagreement because you know, you know, we're on a tangent now, so let's do it. What are, what are we talking about? Okay, so I'm like, I think every freedom's worth all the shit that, that, that comes with the freedom. It depends on what they are. I mean, it depends on the freedom, and it depends on... And at this point, I don't really believe we truly have freedom of speech, because you can get arrested for saying the wrong thing. And I, I don't... You can get arrested for saying the wrong thing? Yeah. If you, if you say something in a cop's face... Boom. You're, you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. So you, you may not get charged and you're going to get released, but you can get arrested. So, right. well, the, 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 the couple of things of the freedom of speech is no violence, no inciting of, of course. violence. Also. So it's not like, I'm going to kill you, cop. That would probably warrant an arrest because that's violent. Right. I'm going to kill you is a violent threat. I'm sorry. It just is. Um, and, and as long as peaceably, right? Peaceably assemble. So it's not violence, no threatening the president, and no like yelling the fire in the theater. Those are your yeah, really. Yeah, no, clear. and I'm the way I am, I, I have, I'm, 
I, I'm a pacifist. Yeah. So I don't, yeah, I love Slayer, but I have no, I have no ill will towards anyone. I have, there's no reason for me to hate anyone or, I, I, you know, I want everyone to be happy. Right. So there's, don't, there's no point, but to your, I'm sorry, to your question, it depends upon the freedom we're talking about. And it depends upon the extreme that the government is willing to go to infringe upon those rights because obviously I think the Patriot Act it's called the Patriot Act okay well if you read it it's terrible right there's nothing that, patriotic so you be about with it me. I thought when you said you no, disagree with no me. I disagree about the Patriot Act I mean sorry I agree with you about the Patriot Act but right. I disagree with you about, about the, fact the overall that, freedom correct okay I that there's you. certain that freedoms sense. that I'm like okay I, I would you know I, I mean like the freedom of the press is that really even a thing now because of the age that we're in now, I mean, there's there, you know, we, people don't even read newspapers anymore. So now people are reading websites and can you really, wh which one do you really believe? Disinformation. Correct. Is Thank you. Disinformation is, is running Ex rampant. Exactly. And none of that shit's true. None of it. Well, right. So For, what? None of it's true. So when you say freedom of the press, the only difference is before the disinformation was from a centralized location like we talked about there are yeah. five sources they still told us what news was they yes. didn't give us the news they gave us segments of their news program yes right B little 30 seconds and that doesn't mean that that's the news there could be something way more pressing that was never shared for fear of x y or z right of course so we don't know. Obviously, some of these have come out over time, but we don't know all of them, right? Yeah. But, like, hearing the thing about Weinstein and Benza and sharing, that was 25 years ago. Dumping art, fake articles or made-up articles about other people to keep him out of the paper. Yeah. And then we only found out about it, what, last year, two yeah. years ago? Yeah. When it really came down? 18, 2018, possibly. So that was 23 years after that part when he was doing that already. Yeah. Holy mother of pearl. And he's not the government even. Imagine the, the reach and the breadth and the resources available to an entity the size of, of government to control me. Or he's not the size of those media programs. He's big, but he's a picture big. He's not a Ted Turner CNN big or a Rupert Murdoch Fox big. Right. Yeah. He's, he's a movie big. producer. He's, yeah. He's big. He's just not them big. Yes. He owns Hollywood. Congratulations. But he, or did or whatever. Yeah. But he didn't own half of the country. Yeah. Or half of the country's channel watching time on CNN or Fox. I'm just using those. I understand. Those are your two, right? News You're channels. Two antithesis. But that, they chose what we watched. They still chose our news. Now we just have all of the information out there, whether it's real or not, and have to figure out what's real or not, which is impossible. That's my point. Right. I don't even know why news, like, I don't even know why news, other than for no, 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 making things no, no, better. No, 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 no. I don't even know why news exists. Period. That's the sentence. Sorry, I meant exists. Yeah, no, I don't no, no. Know I don't news. even know why news. That's it. That's the end of the sentence. Because it's just crap. You can't, you can't believe CNN, and you can't believe Fox News. So... And you can't believe the shit that people tweet. Correct. And the shit that people put on their Facebook. Correct. So what what was the one in the social dilemma? Eating Chinese food. Can you get co can you get COVID nineteen from eating Chinese food? I, I it was in the background. There was one of those like oh, weird shit, things. Really, I picked up on that, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Well, only if you eat the broccoli and beef and broccoli, broccoli or fungus. Oh, did you like what I sent to the to the Phoenician mayor candidate? No, what did you? What did you what, no, did you? What? I missed it. I didn't, bro. When did you send it? On my way over here it today? Is after no, this was yesterday. I thought I shared. Was it this with a you. text? It was. Oh, a text. oh yes, yes, I saw it. Yeah. Would you like to read it to our I have listeners? To. Okay. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you meant you tweeted it because it's after. Because it's after. Because the it's election. after. It's amazing. And because it was sent to me, I didn't. I didn't make this up. This yes. was sent to me. I'm reading this verbatim. So there's a picture of this woman who's very chesty. By the way, <laughs> is she very single? She, I think you should. She looks like a woozy oh, woman. Hello, Twitter. What's her name? Hamilton. Oh, oh my God. No. 
What? What's her name? Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> her name is Alexander Hamilton. No, 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 it's Alexandria Hamilton. No, Shut okay, up. yeah. God, no, I'm just kidding, bro. But oh, read it. It's okay. It's Marissa. Yeah, M E R I S S A. Marissa. Okay, and this is where it gets funny. Hey, this girl, is, how you doing? This is where I think I'm funny. We're not gonna use last names because we're not gonna dox. She's all right. Yeah, she's not nearly Mexican enough. But what? <laughs> Does she have to be? Met? That sounds racist, man. Or is that just racial? Yeah, it's just racial. Is a preference racist? No. I love all the ladies. Yeah, but I'm saying if you prefer, is that racist? I don't feel No, like that's it's called a preference. Right, it's called a pre- I, I. Whoa. Sorry, Sam Kinison just showed up. It's one where our centers meet, <laughs> sir. We're, this is the center part of our center left and center right. Nobody can see you with your that. hand directing traffic, <gasps> um, sir. So Marissa, she, there's a picture. She's got a left hand on the hip. Ooh. It's kind of boosting out the boot. She, she's busty. Hey now. Dark black, almost blackish hair. No one has black hair, by the way, just as an aside. Really? Yeah. That's Mexicans do. It's not black. Um, really? Not black. I'm, I, it's what I've been told, man. I, maybe I'm lying now. So anyway, she's, she's attractive, this person. Okay. The only candidate, check, check mark, is there's a check next to it, supported <laughs> by law enforcement, check two, will not defund the police. Marissa something for Phoenix mayor. I'm not going to say last name, so, but Phoenix Mayor, I should give it away, Marissa. For a better Phoenix, vote now. I'm totally going to get my taxes gone off because I live in the city. Damn okay. It. Seriously, what's up with the skyrocketing crime in Phoenix? Mark, did you know our current mayor wants to defund the police and supports putting anti-police extremists on the police oversight task force? This isn't good for Phoenix. Marissa Blank is the only candidate in the race that won't defund. <sighs> Where is she? Oh, won't okay. defund our police. No, it's just so long. It's so long and exhausting. She's also the only candidate supported by our police. She'll keep Phoenix safe and vibrant. Ooh, and vibrant. But she's not Mexican. I like the vibrant Mexican colors. Go ahead. Chris is shaking his I'm head. I'm shaking my head because I do not like this me. message that she's he's presenting. Me. Yeah. Okay. For, for for years to come. Vote Marissa Blank for Phoenix mayor. By the way, this is James. I can say James. Hola. Can say? Hello, James. Thank you for sharing this text. Be sure to vote. And then the, the command to reply stop to opt out. Once again, making me do something. This is the bullshit conditioning, right? So my reply, may I? Yeah, no. Okay, Go let's ahead. put it down. No, that's what Marissa wants. Okay, so, what, what, busty Marissa. Yeah, now I wrote. This I'm going to write in. I'm going to. Can I see your ballot? I'm going to write in. Write in candidate busty Marissa. <laughs> <laughs> Marissa busties. Okay, is that right? We're so screwed. Is dude. it? We're so screwed. Busty comma Marissa. This. So I reply. This is the least effective way to ask an independent thinker like myself to do anything. Unsolicited messages to my personal device encourage me to go contrarian to the message sent. To that end, fuck off. <laughs> Exclamation point. Also, I think you spelled Melissa in collectory. <laughs> Sir, please. Oh, my God. I, I believe you spelled Melissa in collectory. That's so amazing. And I hope that that joke landed because. That is so funny, dude. It is hilarious. It looks funny when it's written out like that, too. It that's just so looks good. Because they're like, they spelled inc- incorrectly wrong. That's all that's going through that stupid James's head because he's a moron and doesn't know anything bigger because he's just a lemming oh, following Mar- Marissa. Hello. Marissa off the busty cliff is what, she, what he's jumping <laughs> off of. How, is that not beautiful that I told her that she spelled her name incor- incorrectly, but then flipped the letters of my, of the word that I was used after. Uh, it's genius. I'm sorry. I'm genius. That's it. I'm Anthony Jeselnik. Please come on our podcast. Cause two genius, three geniuses need to meet. I don't think I can keep up with him. He's a phenomenal man. I do. I, I truly admire the work that he puts in. Thank you. Ricky Schroeder's thumb. I was waiting for that. Yeah, we were waiting. And Chris is munching on it on some cheese. Cheese stick. Cheese stick. All right, sir. What do we got next? Because I'm following. You're you're keeping us. You're sending us home. I didn't keep any extra notes, but you I know that, exactly what we're talking about. That's all you got? Yeah. So, no, but I know the notes. I We can speak to all that. We're going to talk about it. Uh, next thing I had was Dr. Freud's nephew, Edward Bernays, who we talked ad nauseum about on the first episode 
1953 during the Cold War was hired by the government to assist with the reaction to the Red Scare, quote unquote, to help control the masses to they dealt with the oh my god the 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 um the russians just tested a nuclear weapon for the first time in 53 what what are we going to do how do we control the fear of the people and oh my god kids get under your desk we're having a nuclear bomb test whatever that shit was called man no i had earthquake drills yes in California, but we never had a nuclear bomb one. Duck and cover. No, you and I never had nuclear bomb ones. No. We were just, just on that tail end of, I think, like a year before, two years before, probably, there was still something I mean, going on. I remember in the 80s, it was very, you know, it was it was Reagan and, but it... It, it, it wasn't as scary as it was in the no, 60s No, absolutely or not. I think it was more tense back then. And I think the communication was a lot less back then. And we were a lot less global back then. Right. As yes, we absolutely. as we connected more globally, it's my opinion that the ten the tension as palpable as it was was more open, at least was more open communication, kinda of sitting across from a table instead of sitting us across from each other on a war zone. Yeah. Agreed. Um, but I remember watching in eighty three watching the day the day after. Early eighties was Jason Robarbs. Uh, yeah. The, the, where they the guy there was a nuclear war and yeah. he's walking with at, his dog, right? Yeah, down at the end of the movie, Don and there's Johnson? nothing. Is it the one with Don Johnson? No, or is it, it was Jason one? Robards, Jason and Robert. he was already like 75 years old at the time. And it was just, it, I, you know, it was horrifying. Mm. And I remember being, like, I was scared. Because you're like, holy crap, the U.S. and Russia, you that the USSR at the time, had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of nuclear missiles. And inside every missile is 20 warheads. You know, and you're like, we could destroy our planet many times over again. And this was 35 years ago. And obviously we can still do that now. And hopefully that's never going to happen, but it's a terrifying thought. I always had a thought about that when they're like, we can destroy ourselves like many times over, but like, are they taking in the variants that like some might get shot down or some might get intercepted. Some might not make it. Some might not actually. Maybe that's why there's so many, right? That's my point. Like, I love that blanket statement. We could blow ourselves. you I'm not a, disagreeing. You have a diet Mountain Dew I can mix with this blue power Uh Hello, Alyssa. 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 Sorry, Alyssa. Do we have some Mountain Dew over there? Is that that was a horrible OJ? That, that was bad. That was your worst OJ ever. But that was like power is delicious. That was like a hello. This blue power is delicious. <laughs> Might you have some lemonade here <laughs> and a little Mountain Dew? So, Alyssa, help us out with some Mountain Dew, please. Hook us up. We're gonna get a case probably at some point. Okay. Hashtag Taste Mountain Dew first. Is that sure. hashtag Mountain Dew first? Yeah, it is because you add the blue Powerade to them because the other way is prettier but not as correct. Tasty. Um, don't fuck it up. No, oh, that's right. Don't <laughs> fuck it up. Thank you. Um, to your point, uh, I don't remember what we we're talking about. Nuclear war. Oh, nuclear war. Yeah. The, how many times over? That's a blanket statement. Yes, they had X amount of nuclear, but don't you think they had thought that some won't work and some like would oh, get intercepted there and they're not going to gonna launch all like. No, there's redundancies and other things like that. I'm thinking, and obviously, if if it is a numbers game, you're trying to outspend. I mean, it's it's arguably true that the capitalistic world, the free market world that spent money, outspent the communist Russia, and that's what caused a lot of its collapse. Them trying to keep up oh. with us as a superpower hurt them a lot and that was in the mid 80s with the increase so much of the military the uh, space race back then even starting with that the 80s was the decade of decadence i mean yeah credit everything you know how i love the shoulder pads bro and we we did it on a government level we did it on a right cocaine ferraris (laughs) no for real right no no you're right the decade of it is everything 80s was it it was pretty awesome if we were (laughs) we didn't make that i wanted 89 to never end Uh, i need to be 21 in 89, which I'll I get you a fake ID. It'll fake be, ID. it'll be okay. Can I be a uh, Mick, Mick, Mick cheeseburger? No, it's Mick Lovin. I know. I didn't want to use his name. <laughs> Why not? Cause he, that's you could be, you could be Mick Lustin. Ooh. Can I be Mick chicken? Yes. I like to be Mick chicken, please. You are approved. Mick I'd like a chicken, chicken approved. sandwich. I'd like a chicken, chicken sandwich, please. Approved. And no <laughs> kale. 
extra kale, please. A kale infused turkey burger. Moving along. I think I anything just made else? A swallow sound. Anything else on the nuclear vessels? Nuclear whistle, Captain. No, just put the whole red scare thing. Like to your point, play it on our rational fears again. Yeah. It's next. Uh, next, I had was the United Fruit Company. Boom. In Guatemala. That's what I've been waiting to This one about. fucking pissed me off. So fucked up. So in 1953, the United Fruit Company in Guatemala, known as a Banana Republic, not the clothing store. or the, where they got the name. Or the Gap, but a Banana Republic. Um, Edward Bernays was hired by the U.S. government. Well, before that. Yes, sir. Uh, the United Fruit Company, the whole reason it's called a Banana Republic is because they controlled... The elected official. Yes. So they manipulated an official. However, a different person got elected. Yes. And vowed, because remember, that was before Bernays got pulled in. Yes. Right? I apologize. No, Correct. that's okay. So go ahead. If, if you want to no, talk no, about no. that part. No, no, no. Go right ahead. You oh, got it. Okay. Because then you can talk about the Bernays part. Um, so what happened was... This guy comes in, starts taking the land from United Fruit because they're saying they're exploiting this, the people. This not democratically the people. elected president Fish. of yeah. Guatemala. He was a he was a young soldier, I think he was a young general or some some military guy. Did you sure. get a splinter? No, uh, no, I had one from the other day. Oh, I, I'm I'm holding Mark's mini Philadelphia Friars hockey stick. Yeah, like you're gonna hit me with it. <laughs> Please stop. I'm gonna get uh, two minutes for cross checking. Two. That was, I think that's slashing, sir. The slashing. You're, you're slashing. Most. I am not into Freddy so, Krueger. So United Fruit Company, this guy comes in and goes, I'm going to take the country back, basically, from this company United that kind of took over. Yeah. And he's like, he starts seizing land and whatever. And that's where they, United Fruit Company turns to Bernays is also like, oh shit. Correct. We lost control. Correct. Because they sold bananas. Yeah. And that's why it's a banana republic. Yeah. And then go ahead. So, Mr. Bernays, the nephew of uh, Dr. Sigmund Freud, begins a fake news agency called the Middle American Information Bureau. So, he basically, from this bureau, releases information to all the newspapers in the country stating how this government in Guatemala has ties to Moscow and how it's communist and how bad it is and how this is a jumping ground for the Russians to attack America. It's prior to Cuba. Yes, Let's 1953. It's prior to Cuba yes. or in Cuba Missile Crisis. Nine years. But it's 100 miles away from the shores. They mentioned specifically it 100 like, miles. It was like, yeah, 300 miles from the U.S. Oh, I thought like you said 100 miles from the from the close, from Louisiana, like the closest yeah, place or something. Yeah, no, it was like 300. Oh, was it? Whatever. Anyway, whatever. anyway yeah, but they close. were talking about how close. Yes. Because it would have, at the time, in 53, been the closest yes. communist. Yes, correct. Before Cuba, obviously. Correct. Which was, what, only 90 miles, if I remember. That correctly. is absolutely correct as well. So he basically, manip the, in caps, I put manipulation. So he base Edward Bernays basically manipulated the situation, and he the guy from Jersey Shore. Yeah, Mike we got a situation. situation. T-shirt time. So President Eisenhower got involved and used the CIA to oust the guy who is democratically elected because they believe that this was actually a real thing. That this was there were actual ties to communism in Guatemala. So they actually, they had, how many times can I say actually, I got to stop that shit. So there, there when were, you listen back. You're going to be very critical of yourself as am I. Cause every time I, I say so, am. so, or the RQ. Yeah. Not you're too. not a real quicker no more. No, that just was that terrible. one. Oh God, that was a quickly changed habit. That was next time. Never again. It was, it was literally like a light switch. A light switch. Not literally a light switch, a figurative light switch. Accur actually, light actually a light switch. <laughs> no, not not at all. It's okay, man. You're going to get actually out of your system in this podcast, and you'll never do this again. Trust me. When you hear it again, we do this. <sighs> Bad, Chris. We get better all the time, man. Getting and better if, every and day. If people don't know, that's because they're getting worse. That's what Tesla said. <laughs> it's getting better. The band, not the car. <laughs> Tesla, the band, I, I came around first. I thought they said signs, signs, everything. Actually, they Nikola did. Tesla came around first. Okay, yes. So, screw you, hippie. I wish I was a hippie. Then I'd have amazing <laughs> hair and a 1969 VW bug. I've seen bald hippies, bro. Uh, okay. 
Whatever it takes. You're not bald. You're balding. Oh, I'm definitely bald, dude. No, you got the hair on the sides if you wanted it. My little you skull. Yeah, out. I'm gonna get a skull. Would you? Would you ever grow it out? Fuck no. Never. You no. wouldn't do that. No. I'd love to see it like one month of no grow, no sh- no shaving. One month. Could you do it for one month? No shave November. <laughs> yes. Peralta no shave. <sighs> Fuck you. Would you do it for a month? Would you? Why? Would you do it for Twitter World? What I have, I have like four. Take hairs a picture in the front, dude. once a day in the morning, just of the of the growth once a day, and tweet it. Could you do that for thirty? For days? my sixteen followers for November, I'll retweet it. Don't you worry. That's dumb. To, Why? I'll, I'll retweet it to my entire two hundred and fifty followers. Oh my god! Friend. Let me let me tell you how that's going to blow up. Would you come? Why? I don't just to because it's you and me. We're just having fun with it. I would drive me nuts. Yeah, okay, dude. never. Mind. After I'm, like five days, I have I, to shave. Look, I'll never. I'm not here to push you. I just thought it'd be fun. If you want to do it, great. If you don't, this what this is what's great about Merca. Merca! Freedoms, bro. Okay. The 97th so, commandment. You don't have to shave if you don't want to. So Bernese creates this middle America. <laughs> information well, he creates bureau. A sauce. And then he creates yes. an information bureau. The middle America information bureau. It spreads falsehoods, complete absolute lies about this person. Correct. That. To the point where the American government believes it, and then they hire him to help them on top of United Fruit hiring him to help them. You know them. what that sounds like? The Phantom Menace without Jar Jar Binks. Oh, it is. You're, You're right. Welcome. It's the Emperor. The See? Senator. Yeah. It's Senator Palpatine. Palpatine. What up? Bro. <laughs> You're welcome. S- Crossing all the streams. Are you saying that we are the Death Star? Sure. Or just the Guatemala is the Death Star. Guatemala no, is Guatemala is not. We or Edward Bernays apparently is the Emperor. Guatemala is Tatooine, but jungly. It's not Dantooine, which is no. the same thing as Tatooine, which sounds the same and also has two sons in desert. Shut up! I'm sorry. Hey, didn't they do that with Abrams? Yeah, I and I love and I. Shout out to JJ J. J. Abrams. I Star Trek. The new the yeah. relaunch was. Gorgeous, gorgeous, sexy and, Star Trek, and a lot of the Abram stuff is beautiful. All of it, all of it's been great. It just seemed very. I know it's homagey, but it seemed a little. Better. It's called Regurgit Burger. Ooh, ew, that sounds like the most disgusting burger I. Want. You're correct. Is that wait? Is it regurgitated before you eat it, or is it a burger that you regurgitate? Both. <laughs> Regurgit turkey burger. So well, anyway, I, I would never get down my gullet if it was re. It was pregurgitated. Pregurgitated. <laughs> it was pregurgitated. It's one thing, but regurgitated. Pregurgitated. <laughs> anyway, so President I- Eisenhower gets the CIA to overthrow this president of Guatemala. There were aircraft flown by CIA pilots bombing Guatemala City. They overthrow the government. And Vice President, I am not a crook, Dick Nixon, makes a visit to Guatemala and says, thank you for showing us around your country. Thank you for overthrowing a communist government. And they found they supposedly or supposedly, ill regardless of the misconfusion, found communist propaganda in the in the Capitol building. Yep. I thought it was funny that uh, they had all these generals or something come down from the United States beforehand, and they had him talk to all these people from Guatemala who said how much of a communist he was. They staged it. Yes, yes, I forgot about that. You're correct. And then people from United Fruit Company think that that Bernays also staged a riot, an anti-American riot. Correct. Right as these United States officials came flying in to really, like, bring home the point. And I think... I, if I even remember part of the story, and I don't want to, it's all alleged. Um, I thought United Fruit Company was part of the anti American rioting because it helped their cause. So they kind of jumped in, like, just like a union would jump I, in. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that yeah. actually happened. That's what I, I think they, they also did that. I said actually. Darn it. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, when you're going to listen to this one, you're just be like, God, Jehovah's a fat. Jesus and Jehovah's a fat. Um, I said actually way too many times. It's not happening. I do that all the time. I say though. I say so all the time, and I say at the beginning almost every statement. It really bothers me. I'm trying to get out of it. It's not. I'm not succeeding very well. Do you, are we good with the with the Guatemalans? Yeah. So they over they oh. so they overthrow <laughs> Guatemala. There we go. I just said it twice. They overthrow uh. Guatemala, and it's done because 
They tipped their servers and their waiters. and Because, and they're out. They showed yeah. their hands because Mr. Bernays, I put down, he reshaped public opinion. Yep. He's just a, he's just a, he's a magician. He's a liar. He's a con man. Well, yeah, he's a. He's a glory. He's a he's a millionaire con man. Well, he's a misinformation whore, and I don't Architect mean that in a, genius. in a bad way. No, he was very good at it. He, obviously, he was asked to get a result, and he knew what it took to get the result. Like, is that such a bad thing? Like, I I, uh, I also put down that I I equated that to his torches of freedom. This was torches of freedom part two. Yeah, because it was the same type. It had a little bit of the, the same template. Pop and circumstance, a right. flash, a little bit. Correct. Bang. Hey, look over here at this hand. Okay, now look at this hand. Okay, now the CIA comes in and mops up. Yeah. It was interesting. It, if the guy from Guatemala was a bad guy in general, okay. But it sounded like he wasn't. It was painted that he was trying to get better wages for the for the common man. Right. It seemed like he was a fighter for the people. Yes. It did seem that way, at least, how it was portrayed. It may not be the truth. I don't know. I, but we're going to take it from both sides. Yes. If he was that guy, any death from the bombings and all the bullshit is not worth it. That's Amen, just my dude. opinion. I could okay? not agree more. It's just not fucking worth it. Well, besides the fact, anytime the CIA is involved, so, is it a good time or not? Well, that's a whole separate thing because there's it's yes no question ah poop there's a (laughs) we've we've touched on a little bit earlier today Do you need to hold the stick of fury no no you have the you have all control you have all control of the stick of fury in the rage room sir um um, totally lost train of thought i did because well it's something that we touched upon it's like how much I'm willing to have all the freedoms we want, right? Of course. The bad things that are done. In the name of freedom, yes. I know in the name of, but honestly. No, lie to me. In my opinion, I felt that it actually has preserved freedom at times. Not just the illusion. Just not in Guatemala in 1953. Right, that's my point. Like, this wasn't where, if if this guy was truly the guy who they paint him as as a guy looking for the people trying to help. And he saw this other company come into his country of his people's country, his people's country and say, no, put his foot down. Damn. Fucking great. Awesome. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Any death Bernays, if, and if Bernays knew that and made all that shit up and people, any, but any death that happened from Bernays, that's on Bernays' shoulders, in my opinion. I agree. Cause he, he could just say, I don't want to do that. Cause that sounds like there's going to be deaths involved and, and ding, and shooting and, War. There's gonna be this is gonna be conflict, like actual bombs going off. Like I don't want that. There were right. bombs. Exactly. Now, if the guy wasn't, if he really was a bad guy, not the communist guy that you know that they painted him to be, just a bad guy, and people didn't like him. Maybe an overthrow was okay, but I don't know. But I'm definitely leaning towards it being what the fuck, man. The dude should have been like, I know I can control and manipulate people. This is one where I'll step away from that. Mm-hmm. But he's probably like, let's see if I can make it happen. Or that ego gets in the way or something gets in the way. Money. His ego had to be huge. I I can't imagine. I mean, they even talk about Anna Freud's ego just being like pain. She's like, she might not have agreed with what was going on, but she let it all happen because she certainly liked the wealth and the notoriety and the fame. Agreed. And you're just like, oh. I hate you guys. Yeah. But you guys so much. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Maybe absolute fame corrupts absolutely. Who knows, right? Yeah. So uh, we get out of that. So they overthrow Guatemala. Yeah. And that it just seems not cool, man. Guy should have said no. Just say no, Nancy. Just say no to drugs. All of that. Yeah, and bananas. Of, and republics. Banana bread is okay. Oh, we're a republic. We can't say no to that. Banana bread is delicious. With a little walnut? Or unless you have a nut allergy. I like... I is like... That, both tree nut is is walnut a tree nut? I don't know tree nut allergy. Well, there's specific tree nut allergies, and then there's I, I don't know is it legumes? That's <laughs> legumes. Yes, that's peanuts, cashews, and mm, other legumes. I love the cashews. Aren't they lima beany? Also, is, I believe uh, a lima, lima bean is also a legume. But let's not go down the nut road. Yeah, well, this is the weirdest thing. All right, well, let's get back on track, sir. Next Guatemala. up was uh, post Guatemala. Post Guatemala, the CIA believed that Russia was brainwashing some of their citizens. 
So the CIA thought they would get on board and try that. So they gave money to Harvard and Berkeley and several other collegiate institutions to try to duplicate what the Russians were doing. So these institutions used LSD, other drugs, and something called ECT. I don't know what that stands for. I, I just Electro it, shock therapy. I know that's EST. No, no, but it's electrocardio shock therapy. Okay, I, I put down electro shock therapy, but it is. they use the acronym ECT, it but is. that's fine. Yeah, they used C. It's a different word than shock, but it was it's the same thing. The whole point of it was they wanted to erase a human's past and bring them down to a base level. That's my interpretation. And a then blank level, a blank almost. level. Yeah. Like a, like a blank, like a clean slate, a clean, literally. absolutely. And then start and then build them back up from there, building a positive experience for them. I've got electroconvulsive. Okay. That's terrible. Yeah. Convulsive. They said therapy. ECT, but then that's what okay. it is. Yeah. They're talking about it. In okay. There. Yeah. Something like that. Electroconvulsive therapy. Okay. So, so they used a lot of drugs in, in, as well as LSD and other drugs, as well as ECT, to do to erase the memories of these people. Yeah. And their thought was they could start with a blank slate and then build that, build them back up again. And I, th- I thought of l- like the military, like the Marine Corps. The Manchurian candidate is what I thought about right okay. away. Do you remember that movie? But God, no. the Marine Corps. Well, we'll I mean, obviously that. the military, that's what they do to grunts. You know, their first day of of basic training, that's what they do. They, and then X number of weeks in, they break down what you are so that they can teach you to be a Marine. Hey, you got to forget everything, you know, that's why they yell at you. That's the point is so that you can become a Marine or whatever different though. It's obviously there's no drugs in the way. It's different. It's it's different. In the way it's it's different. It it gives, they, they make you confide to their structure. Correct. Versus, Like there is some of the psychological because you do feel shame initially. So you do want to change quicker. Yes, maybe you, you want to be able to yes. conform quicker. Absolutely right. But they definitely make you f- conform to the structure yeah. that they create. They make you a jarhead where it's different than these guys. They're trying to strip and rebuild like in a weird way who you are. Yes. I think the Marines were like, you become selfless. They, they change core values of you. Yes. But they don't, necessarily affect who the core of you is. They right. just make you, you don't forget to, your memories prior right. to your 18th birthday. Right. And how, what about that woman that was on that? On yes. That she She's didn't, like, I don't remember anything. She doesn't remember her life. She doesn't remember the doctor. Correct. She doesn't remember anything at the, insti- at the Institute anything. or her life before. And what they found was people were just went mindless. They literally had memory loss and everything. Yeah. They became vegetables. Absolute failure. Yes. Absolute. Failure. Correct. Um, craziness. I, I just thought that was just horrible. Horrible that people would be subjected to that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can call volunteers, but what do they really know they're fucking getting into, people? Like, if I wrote a contract, yeah, some ECT will be involved and some LSD, and you're like, okay, whatever these things are, sound that LSD doesn't, it's ECT doesn't sound so bad. Like, they don't even know what it is. You know what I mean? How are they, how'd they sign up? Yeah, and, and they said that they did ECT several times a day. Right. How, after the first one, one, wouldn't you like? I have to go now. Wouldn't you leave? Yeah, I don't know how. I don't know how they kept people there. I don't. And maybe that's what it was. They were so drugged up. Maybe oh. they were just so drugged up they didn't want to go. I don't know the whole oh. ins and outs, but all of it sounds Not horrible in, in, to happen in the United States. Yeah. Just a horrible thing to happen in the United States. Yeah. I. I, I I mean, universities were funded to do this. That's and 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 they said that I those universities that. were given a lot of money, a lot, and they're like, "Hey, man, take some LSD, bro." That sounds good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll try uh, that. Yeah. Oh, not eight hundred fucking times the recommended dosage. <laughs> I don't know. Does that create a schism? I can you Many overdose schisms, on LSD? Probably. I mean, you can overdose on anything. No, you can't. You cannot overdose on, on weed. marijuana. True. Okay, I'm sorry. Because so, it's a chemical thing, and I think yeah. LSD is chemical, whereas like the point about heroin is you forget to breathe, in my opinion. Oh. It, yeah, uh, heroin's allegedly like the auto, yeah, 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 yeah. Allegedly, the auto-breathing gland in the back of the skull yeah. is right next to the heroin receptors, allegedly, or opioid receptors. Yeah, right. That's So when they fill that up, yeah. 
That's any painkiller is right there. Correct. Yeah, so, boom. Yeah. So, I don't know though. I'm curious, but I'm. I bet you could have a mental break and never come back. Like, where yeah, you couldn't you just split? Like, you could still breathe. Imagine your hallucin hallucinogen or your hallucinations. Yeah, they would freak you the fuck out. Yeah, you'd fucking. So snap. you'd shut down. Yeah, something yeah. would happen. I could right. see a break. You might still be conscious, break. but you don't know you're conscious. Ugh, I don't yeah, even want to, I don't want to know. I, That's interesting. I'm gonna look that up later. I would. Tr I would totally love to try. Me too. LSD once. Four heels. Ayahuasca. I'd love to try peyote even because I. That's yeah. a, I'm curious about that because I don't think it's as strong as some other stuff. But I'm curious. Is it more like alcohol or is it a little stronger? I don't, little you're stronger asking now. me. Yeah. I've never tried shit. Um, Psycho. I look. <laughs> I've never done any hard drug. Hard drug at all but i'm very curious about L i am curious about ayahuasca specifically and the other one we need to try dmt psilocybin psilocybin the other one and i don't how are we going to eat that do we just swallow them whole I, I don't know they're mushrooms bro yes we put them in a diet coke not a tea i can't do it in a tea no that just they swallow make. that shit like a just pill glue. yeah like and a not what do you call it? It? like glue? like an oyster just gulp oh yeah just gulp okay oh whole yeah. nose glue. yeah okay. or you just chop it up with a knife boom that doesn't Top it up sounds like it's gonna get stuck in places. Slivers of it gonna get stuck in my throat, and I'm like, I still taste fungi. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it on a pizza, bro. It's, I'm no longer fun, guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, is did you? Are you the one that told me? Somebody told me that the the psilocybin or the mushrooms, like the the first time you take it, you have crazy hallucinations. Hallucinations. I cannot say that word. I did the same thing about two twenty eight seconds ago. Two twenty eight hallucinations. Will you hallucinate? We, we, no, we over, we're overstating hallucinations. <laughs> it's hallucinations. Dude, I'm not. I haven't I even had a drink. I'm not even, look, I'm not even supposed to be here today. <laughs> I don't even want to. I don't even like <laughs> I don't you. Even like you. So there, it's it, it, they're so extreme, yeah. and the trip is so crazy. You end up vomiting at the end. I've and heard like, ayahuasca like, vomit anyway. Maybe that's what it was. Did you tell me that? Yeah. Who was telling me I that? I believe you vomit. It's not from the hallucinations. But the, the it's experience, a physical, right. It's and a it, physical reaction to and the, the drink. The vomiting is so extreme, it's horrible. Yeah. But then the next time you take it, it's the most amazing experience of your life because it's so spiritual and eye-opening and it's like you're walking with the gods. Is what? Who the hell told me this? I've heard that you a second time is is mandatory. We may have said this, but after my after shit, the extreme you know. vomiting, I don't want to try it again. No, that's the point. And I've heard the extreme vomiting now is part of it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna have to accept it. That's just I don't. Oh, man. I know, but it comes with it. Now this is the thing. Do you know how it's taken? No. This is what's crazy about it. Shaman, take the thing. That is the ayahuasca. The ayahuasca contains DMT, dimethyltryptamide, whatever. Okay? Some big word. DMT. But if you just ingested that, your body doesn't, it has an inhibitor to not accept oh. DMT. It actually fights the receiving DMT. So you don't, nothing happens. So what do you have to take it with? You actually have to take a thing before it. And it's another plant. Like a cheesecake? Down in the rainforest. Oh. Not a turkey right runner. next to the fucking eye. Like, I have no idea how they fucking figured it out, but this thing is an inhibitor to that to that block in your body. Then you take the ayahuasca. That does that combination. I've heard has make does make you sick, but the DMT then is in your body, and that's how you have oh, your trip. Okay. That's how your DMT uh, experience. It's pretty intense, from what I've heard. I'm very interested. And scared as all get out, but I'm very interested. Where do to you? Try where it. would you get that? Peru. Oh, so you can. Or can't. you can. Mm, Tucson like, is actually there. There allegedly does an ayahuasca ceremony with a shaman. It's still illegal though. That's the problem. Is it? Um, is that the one where you throw up? Yeah. And then you do it again, like the day later. I would think next time. So like I a week you, later. I would think months, even months. In some cases, I would think you're like. Let, let's see if I'm ready to go back. Because the first experience could be pretty terrible. Who knows? Right. But it's an unknown for sure. You don't Dude, know. Dude, if there's vomiting. It's vomiting. <laughs> you're you're throwing, but, it, but it's really the chemical issue. It's a, it's a body issue to this whole thing. And it is ex excessive from what I've heard. So anyway, so that's how that works. But I would, but there allegedly you can vape just straight DMT now. You could just smoke DMT. Right. But if it doesn't do anything. 
It does 50. No, this is DMT where it smokes. It has something to do with pull. Something about the combination of plants for ayahuasca is different. DMT is like in its face and you smoke it and it becomes a thing. It actually just hits oh, you. Oh, so you don't need the other plant to enable Correct. it. Correct. Okay. Yeah. I didn't get it, that. It does it differently. I don't, the whole thing about the plant thing, I just remember that there's something that there's a step in between okay. that's necessary for the DMT or the ayahuasca to get it to work. The enabling. Something. Yeah. Something. Anyway, that was a nice tangent. Drug now, tangent. Now, yeah. Now that we, we are, know nothing about. Nothing. <laughs> Uh, check out Joe Rogan episodes. Yeah, I know. He mentioned, I watched 20 minutes last night and he mentioned it. Yeah, and I'm like, an I know you've mentioned it. I know he mentioned it. And I still don't know what the fuck it I is. I mentioned it because of him. Yeah, right. I, I, I certainly, yeah. an, an, a lot of my psychonaut stuff, I think that's what it's called now. Psilocybin. Psilocybin. All that stuff. I've, I've, I've been educated through the Joe Rogan podcast, no doubt. Psychedelics? It's, is that the other thing? That's mushrooms, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, it's mushrooms. Any psychedelics. Marijuana is, is marijuana is a psychedelic. Yeah, it's a psychotropic drug. Psycho, okay. Psychotropic, psychedelic, same thing. It okay. creates it. It creates an altered state. It changes your perception of things. I think, okay. in my opinion, which is what psycho whatever does. Okay. Say this happened. Uh, okay. Fungi. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Keep I going. don't even like shrooms on my pizza, dude. Bro, I don't even like you. I don't even want a beer today. I don't want a beer. 37 dicks. Are we going to move on? Yeah. I'm Next on my you, list, sir. sir Ricky Schroeder's Ricky thumb has been waiting for you. He's in the car still. He's, he's all amazing. buckled up in his little thumb seat. Wait, did you give him, did you crack a window? It's still 100 degrees out there. No, he's in mid October. It's 100 degrees. No, it's not going to be 100. Today, yesterday was the last day of 100. That oh, was it? Yeah. Okay, good. Thank goodness. It was 100 yesterday. I remember that. October the 16th, 100 16th, degrees. 100 degrees. Stupid as shit. 2020. So what a year. What a year. What a fucking ridiculous. We're out of triple digits at least until next year. Until February. Uh, yeah, at least until next year. March. We got maybe. about three months. <laughs> <laughs> we got about three days. 17 days. 17, oh my God. Uh, we got about 17 days till we get back in the triple digits. But you know what? It is a beautiful place to spend fall, winter. I did. Uh, I had. I drank coffee this morning out on the back patio. It's Magsy, nice. Magsy and I were out there. We have a. We have a. Um, a thermocell radius thing. It's a battery powered thing that shoots up uh, some mist brain stuff. cells. It probably kills a lot of brain cells, but it keeps pests away. We yeah. didn't get bit or anything. It was beautiful. Out there. I had two flies. Bought a Traeger grill. I saw two your days grill. Ago. It's Did fucking you lovely. I gotta show it to you downstairs, bro. Don't don't get. Oh, it's four, it's four inches, inches longer. longer than last year's model. <laughs> <laughs> the Orgasmatron. Oh, look how it smokes the pole. I mean, meat. I mean, um, meat actually I mean, does smoke the meat. Ooh, corn on the cob. Oh, oh, oh. okay. That's, That's a tangent. huge zucchini. <laughs> Eggplant. Next up on the list, Emoji. the film industry in 1960. Bum, bum, bum. A friend of Anna Freud treated Marilyn Monroe due to her emotional issues, drug issues, alcohol issues, anxiety, etc. Uh, the the idea of this psychoanalyst was to move Marilyn's ego to see how a normal person would live their life and not a movie star because she lived in such a strange world of drugs and fame and fortune and et cetera. So, uh, this psycho and analyst moved Marilyn Monroe in with his family, with his wife and his kids so that he, Marilyn became like his adopted daughter. She lived there for a couple, about 18 months and tried to show her what a normal life is like to see if he could shift her ego in the end to try to control her self-destructive urges. Yeah. So it was interesting. Uh, there was another actor who did a movie all about Eve with her. And she was friends with that guy that went, whose house she went over. Which guy? The woman that was in the interview that was in the actual yes, documentary. The was, friend of Marilyn. Right. But she also did a she movie. She did a movie with, with Marilyn. She did all about Eve with her. She was in that yes, movie. She was with a her. friend of Marilyn, but right. she also knew the she, gentleman. Yeah. Green who took her in. Rick Green or yes, some, yes. something like Greenness. I forget. I don't want to slander her name, so I don't want to, I don't remember the exact name, but that was a gentleman who was known who took Marilyn in. Yes. And the woman's like, why you never invited me to dinner or whatever. And she, 
he t- he looks at her and he's like, "You're not as damaged as her or something." Yeah, he I was think, like, "I think said Marilyn was messed." I think he uh, said, "You're not broken." Yeah, you're not as broken as her, or you're not as sick as her. That's what it was. I think she says, "You're not as sick as she is." And then one goes, "Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah." That was pretty telling. It was the way she still told that story, yeah. and then you hear about it. And she said she had no base in reality. She had n- no comp, like no compass. She Correct. was just out of control. Yeah, and it wasn't wasn't that she was defiantly out of control. I don't think she knew what control was. Correct. Or, she had no comp. You're exactly right. Compass is the right word. She had no base of reality, and that's therefore the world was crazy to her. And that, and that's so sad, and it, it's unfortunate that. In 1962, she uh, committed suicide. It's really sad. But the guy tried, and I give him a ton of credit of that. They all tried. And once again, though, it was the wrong way because we're going to find the end of this. Well, it was to suppress. It was through psychoanalysis. That's the point, though. I think this is what they're all pointing at. This is what they're hinting at. I don't think so in this case. They're hinting at this style of psychotherapy is a failure. That's what they're saying. And not only were they saying that, it didn't make it, it didn't not, not only did it not make it better, it actually made our fears worse because suppression was the worst thing for humans to go through versus trying to work with it, right? That's what it came out to at the end of this, yes. of this episode. Yes. So it's my opinion. They're trying to tell us that the suppression method they tried with Marilyn as well because she was, the guy was connected to the psychoanalyst. Yes. To the Freuds. To the I, Freudian I, I, theory. And the Freudian theory was flawed, is my point. That's why suppression didn't work. Hence, kept going, allegedly killed herself. There yeah, are, I, there I know. There's schools of thought that she was also killed. I know. And I, I mean, I, I, I agree that did she really kill herself? We need to do a hashtag conspiracy theory on that, sir. We okay. Need, we need to do, we need another conspiracy theory. Do you want to do we a JFK a Maryland? Let's do, oh yeah. Well, definitely the Maryland thing. And obviously that would be connected to that. For sure, she she rubbed elbows with everybody. Just elbows? Well, wow. if you push my fat elbow together really close enough together, it yeah. looks like it too. Whoa, that's sexy right there. That? Nice. Ooh, hey now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna explain what we're doing, but we're not touching. We're There's definitely no touching. we're definitely six feet apart. We're, yeah, we are definitely still practicing. We're probably social probably distancing. more than six feet apart. We are, and we're, we're in the so- same room. We're socially distant because we say we like each other. Not we really, really at all. Fucking hate Not even other. a little bit. Like that whole thing about we, we can sit down and discuss. No, we just get lies. We disagree on everything and lie. Yeah. And yeah. It's all lies. So next. The last thing was that uh, the last gentleman, which it's been what you've been hinting at all fucking day. It, the, the way that Freud and Anna and Bernays, They've been controlling humans versus trying to free the humans. And that's that's been your point, is that this way to, the way that they've been going about things is suppression and oppression of emotions and fears and the, the, the human, the human inside the human, I guess you could say. Yeah. The base human. The caveman. Medulla oblongata. Colonel Sanders got a mandula oblongata. Uh, to that end, um, I believe that in, it's my opinion, no beliefs here, right? Ideas, thoughts, opinions. You can believe in stuff. Opinion is that Freud got it right about the human, in my opinion. Right? How many times did I say the word opinion in that? Actually, how many times did I actually say opinion? Two. Actually. So, um, but for the darkness is there. We just have to, we have to address it differently than suppress it. <laughs> right. So we should let it out or we well, should, that's the point. We have to work with it somehow. That's the, that's where they, that's where they're leaning into in this next part that they're leaning into. Right. Cause they talked about kind of transitioning to like, yell, you know, having different weird free open. So yeah. So in, into the sixties and whatnot. Right. How so free part and, three whatever. is. The opposite of part two, right? Is what you're saying? Yeah, almost in a weird or a, or an explosion a of freeing, the letting it a go. Freeing, yeah. Okay. So addressing the issue versus suppressing the issue. Okay. Right? So what's interesting is su- suppression didn't work. It actually just made it worse. But were they wrong in believing or in coming to the conclusion that man is irrational? Right. They 
both one part can be right and the other part can just be wrong, right? They could have still analyzed correctly that man is irrational. They just handled how to deal with it wrong. I, yes, I would agree that that's a true statement. So do you think, do you, are you in agreement with the Freudian way that men are inherently, men and women, humans, humans homo sapiens are inherently evil underneath with the base, that base irrational fear, anger, you know, the lizard brain stuff we, we are at a core that, and somehow that can't come out for us to live civilly together. I don't agree with that. I, I, I agree. I would say that humans have survival instincts and, but that lizard brain and survival instincts can be equated as the same thing. So if your survival is threatened, whether it's life, food, shelter, your family, if those things are threatened, will the lizard brain kick in? That's where I would say yes. So to answer your question, I would say yes and no. Does that, do you see what I'm saying? I absolutely do. Um, pallets of toilet paper. Yeah. Uh, right. We did it. We talked about we it. Did. I know we talked about it last time. We did. Or, or the one we just released. The part part one. one. Part one, we talked about it. But to that end, I, I'm leaning towards the agreement that we are rational because when it comes to brass tacks, we lose all sense of civility. I, I, I hate to say all I know, sense. I, I hate I know. to say all sense. That sounds awful. It's true, though. However, I don't know if we're evil just fighting to get out. And that, no, that's self, where it's a it's little not evil. extreme. Right. It's like self-centeredness. Right. Selfishness. But, but it is what drives us. Like one's sexual, own, but it's anger, yes, murder. It's one's own self-preservation. Right. But, but when they're also talking about it, it's like the Nazi Germany... They were attacking. They were evil. They were doing evil acts. They were really killing people as part of their base to animal instinct. To propagate their own way. Right. But it, but it wasn't for survival. They weren't no, threatened. They There's wanted to destroy others. Correct. Right. To so, elevate themselves. So that's the question. I don't know if it's to that level. I, to your point, I think we regress to survival instincts when needed. Correct. And it's easy for us to be. It's sad to me that people think that. They're better. Oh, yeah. It kills me, man. How many times have we sat hat in hand on Twitter or whatever? We're like, the one we were talking about freedom of speech, I was going to refer to a Twitter conversation I had yesterday. You liked some of the stuff, and it was between, a, I believe it was a young woman and myself. And she tweeted or retweeted something about freedom. You know, you still, freedom of speech, you still have to be accountable for what you say. There can be consequences to your words. So I wrote about... Absolutely 100% right. There is a personal accountability to that speech. That said, you still should, are allowed to at least say it if you want to risk that, whatever. We had a nice little back and forth about it. Yeah. But but it's just, that's kind of how it is, right? Where we're just, we're civil. That's the point. We we are totally civil. I wonder how quickly that dissolves. Oh, what, shit. Is it Look different around, because I don't dude. know that person? Yeah, I know, oh, but of course. Like, what, what would it take? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, for you and I to dissolve our togetherness, like our friendship or whatever, like what, like we're talking, there's one rat left and we need a rat to make it to tomorrow. Yeah, I understand. Right? Like whatever. Yeah. I'm yeah, just yeah, saying yeah, like, yeah. what would it take for you and I to not? I mean, but I've seen so. six months ago, I saw, I was, I was putting my clubs on the golf cart to start a round and these two brothers were coming off the course and they were taking their clubs off the bag and they started yelling at each other because one brother was accusing him of cheating on his scorecard. And they almost came to blows. And I, they may have been drinking. I don't know. Right. But they were blood. Regardless. They were blood brothers. Well, they Look, if they were drinking, they also chose to drink and deal with the accountability of that. They're still responsible for their True. body. But to your no question offense, of but... you and I and our survival, and we've known each other 28 years, would we kill each other over the rat if it came to that? These two guys are blood relatives, and they were almost fighting over a stupid golf score. Right, over the a dumb, number. <laughs> and there was probably money involved, right. 20 over bucks. the sharpness of a pencil. How, stu you know, how right. stupid is that? That's funny. Oh my, and, the, and, and there's 20 guys there, yeah. all can hear their idiocy. And you know what's funny is that tension goes out like a wave, man. We talk about energy. So you want to talk about energy. Oh, yeah. You, you're very sensitive to it. Um, but that energy just goes out. Everyone hits, it hits bings off everybody like a little radar blip. Yeah. They take a little bit of that with them. 
and they get it from other people throughout the day, and then they start throwing it back at other people when it hits their level. Like, yes. They hit, like, critical but mass nobody and nobody thinks about that, and nobody no. realizes that. Okay, no, they don't. Most they don't people, realize. I apologize. No, no, they don't. They don't realize that. Many people don't. It's unfortunate. That's the way it is. So. That's all I have, dude. So. No more I sows. I, <laughs> a needle-pulling thread. I believe. I believe. I think that Freud isn't 100% correct. We are capable of getting to that level. Absolutely. Even, even, I mean, Germany was pretty dire, though, when they got there. Haven't we showed that? Yeah, but, Haven't humans showed that we can do that? Yeah, but Nazi for, Germany could be uh, one of those survival instincts thing. 50% unemployment or whatever, or whatever it was. Like, how yeah. dire that time could have felt. And th- that, okay, so they felt I mean? that was the only way. Hey, if we follow this uh, guy. That I really felt. And then he, he said it and he did it. Right. I'm not, I, not I understand. condoning the from actions. Their, from their perspective, I get what you're saying. From initially, and then by the time they realized how really out of hand it was, it probably was too late. But that initial part, why not? Let's get in there. We're, we're making money now. We're, I got my job back. Whatever. I can yeah. feed my kids. Uh, whatever. What, whatever it was taking at that time to get there. I'm not defending or attacking any of it. I'm just looking at it as much as I can objectively. And... It pulled. It definitely pulled them out of that horrible place that they were economically. Yes, the war machine. But it was worse that they killed seven million Jews. Well, yeah, it was worse that they killed the Russians, 10, twenty million at Russians, the Belgians, it, the French. It, it was worse with all the other stuff. How they got there, how they got out, was worse. Regardless, yes, and that's what it's down to: money or people, right? Humanity or yeah. Every or war is stupid. Well, I'm just saying, you and I, like we're talking about Bernays. This whole thing was controlling us. Yeah, consumerism, money, consumerism, or greed, or, or humanity, and like I don't even know if it is. It's like almost like once again, are the doctors just so intent to see if they can pick it apart and figure it out, and the consequences are this because of their methods, or are they really diabolical and going like, I want to own everything. I want to control. Well, control and power, people get off on that. I know. I I, I mean, I'm uncomfortable with it. I agree. I don't give a shit. Well, I mean, I'm visibly uncomfortable with leadership. Oh, well, everyone's different. And I'm, I'm, I am lucky that I'm half my mother and half you my father. You are a leader. Well. You are a leader. But I that's see. because I'm half my dad. You have but I also problems. don't mind being led because I'm half my mom. I'm very lucky that I have that split where I can, I am comfortable in either role. Part of my lack of leadership ability is due to my lack of followability. I have a very hard time following as well. So my, my leadership, my lack of leadership is my distrust in leaders to begin with. So you need your own Island. Yeah. You just need to be left alone. It's, it's literally based on my distrust in leaders yeah, I understand. I totally get it, dude. It's weird. Yeah. But it's backwards because I would think I'd have I could do it if if like come to brass tacks, if I had to lead something. Yeah. I think I have the wherewithal to handle it. You can just but, channel check mark. But I would I have such a distrust of leaders. I get and it. And that definitely comes from some childhood stuff. Uh, definitely. Yeah, I right. wish I could wish I could put the thumb on that one. For sure, R- your thumb or Ricky's? Thumb? Uh, Ricky's, the Ricky okay. Schroeder's thumb. Not your thumb. May I borrow? If well, if it makes it to me, if I can catch it. Yes. Up the shaft. If you don't. Oh, Let's and see. the shaft again. And the shaft. Whoa. So we're there. Um, yes, sir. So we come out of part two. Yes, sir. Uh, this whole psychoanalysis fucked us up more. Yeah, I feel very psycho and analyzed. So they tell you to suppress, suppress, suppress. I'm really good at that. And then we explode. Catholic school, bro. Bro, Catholic school. And now, and then part three is where we start to hopefully. Uh, I'm going to become a hippie. But the engineering of consent, just the term is unbelievable. They should have just called it, how do you control a human? Yeah. And then make them. <laughs> 40 different ways. Make them buy Betty Crocker. That's true. I, and, and and eggs. I do love cake. Per One egg per box. So yes. they need 12 boxes of Betty Crocker eggs at, least, at minimum. Correct. Or Unless, six. Sometimes they do half. Unless half you're dozen. buying an 18 pack. That, like, yeah, 18 I, pack or six pack. I do buy you, 18 you eggs at a time. I do 28, 24, bro. You're crazy. I double it. And if I, well, I go with the the most that can be jumbo, jumbo eggs. You know why jumbo? A lot of them are twins. Double, double yolks. Twins. 
Twinsies. I love Twinsies. I know. I love eating Twinsies. They're delicious. <laughs> They're doubly delicious. A little hot sauce. A little crisper. A little crisper tor- action. Mm. One, one can't get HIV. The other one's memory increased. Oh, mm. my goodness. That yolk is, that embryo is delicious. And it's de- we had a 12 pack of jumbo. I believe b- between five and seven of them were double, double yolk. So six. I'm not. <laughs> between five and seven. <laughs> Gosh darn it. I love Christopher <laughs> so much. And if it wasn't for our 28 years, I'd regress right now and I'd be pummeled. Well, uh, be, I'm probably I, trying to be pummeled. I have you, the stick be, of fury, so don't. You're get, holding a stick of fury. I'd be pummeled. Pummeled. Dude, this would break so easy. All right. So um, in a month, we're yeah. dropping part three, I hope. Yes, we're, sir, we'll we are. Wait. I don't even know we what, will. what happened. Okay, we do. We will. We shall. But um, this has been part two of the documentary of the century of self. Yes, sir. And what was it titled again, sir? The some, the Engin- engineering of consent. That's correct, sir. Has been another Knox conscious, ladies and gentlemen, please follow us. Please subscribe, rate, leave a comment, review, all that stuff, all that somewhere, yeah. please. Um, we are number. I'm looking at our numbers and people are tuning in. So we that's appreciate cool. that so much. Uh, we are more than grateful. Yes. We are, uh, we're actually, by the time this airs, we will be over 5,000 downloads. We'll be at it by tomorrow, bro. I believe the next day. That's my personal goal is Tuesday. I'm going to say tomorrow. Monday, uh, Monday or Tuesday. I will bet you one Baphomet statue. Billion dollars. Tomorrow. We could do it. We could do it by tomorrow. We're doing it tomorrow. We can do it, kids. We can do it, team. Um, To that end, we uh, thank you for checking in with us. And check marking it. Chat, with us. thank you. We're about to uh, record a beer Googles next. Yeah. So that'll be a little fun. But uh, this has been more of our not conscious serious side. Just kind of look behind the veil. Peek around the corner, guys. Keep your eyes open. You never know. People are trying to control you in some weird way. I'm not saying that you don't let, like, you know, just have your mind about it. Just know what's going yes, on. Yes, be aware. Be vigilant. We're not telling you to, to firebomb anything. No Malatov cocktail. Yeah, don't fire no on anything. And no touch. Yes, no violence. Yeah. We're just saying be aware of this stuff. And then and then zag when they think you're gonna zig. Like tell the and tell the NRA guy that I hate them. <laughs> and tell Even though he has guns. And right, and tell the gun guy, you know, the pro the pro uh wanting to take my guns away guy that Merca. You know, whatever. So but please follow us. Subscribe. We'd love more reviews. We're still under thirty. And we have five thousand downloads. That's crazy. Over five thousand by the time this is yeah, weird. it's crazy. We're, I can't believe how far four months it took, and that's amazing. I I thought that was going to take two years. No Amaze joke. balls. Amaz balls. Thank you so much. Thank you. And gracias. Both. Oh, hey, I stole your. I stole your thank you. Gracias. Sorry. All right. In closing, be excellent to each other. <laughs>